Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the old Sunday Fun Day here at JJ's Yo. Watch Hangout. I'm joined by Mr. Robert Wood himself, the ace of base, as I've named him lately. That is <laughs> <laughs> not to be confused with the uh, pop band. You know, there's no, no. Uh, this is no uh, pop music here. But, uh, no, metal only. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this is my uh, first day back. For those who don't know, I was away, and uh, I did some extensive testing of the Tissot PRX Powermatic 80 as my destination watch of choice. Worked quite well, quite well. Kept time excellent, looked good, and I wasn't worried about losing it. Yeah, I saw the picture in the group. It looked like you were having a great time, and and the watch was doing well. Yes, yes, it worked out well. The only thing is... I needed a pool slash ocean watch. Um, ah. Some type of dive watch would have been a good complement to it. Um, but I only went with one watch. So Yeah, you could always throw in like a G-Shock. Those yeah. are great pool ocean watches. Yeah, I was thinking of that. Or maybe I was thinking of possibly bringing this bad boy right here. Oh, yeah, attic. that would have been a good one. Right. Um, hmm, I don't know. I don't know what else I would have brought, but... Yeah, those uh this this one worked quite well, quite well. So I made a little mistake, a little boo-boo I'll tell everybody about in a minute. I just want to uh run through the chat and see who's here. We have our man Turtle Knight in the house. He says upvote Fikers. Yes, I agree. We got the hot watcher, another member of the crew saying, Let's go, Sunday fun day. Hello, watch people. We got our man Quicker in the house. Hey, Quicker. Uh huh. We have an acquired taste saying lock him up, serial criminal. I think he's talking about TPG, which we will be getting into some I TPG updates as well. I believe so. I'm pretty interesting what's happening. Um, let's see. We got Snookered in the house. We got Owl in the house. We got our man Bubba Hotep. He says, happy Sunday, fun day. Thank you, Bubba. And we have Jeremy Lopez who says, I can do an unboxing first time luxury watch owner purchase from the AD three days ago. Nice. Yeah, Jeremy, hop on. That would be awesome. We would love to do an unboxing. Uh, I will put the link in the chat if anybody would like to come join Robert and I. I know uh, Ali will be here at some point. He's a little busy right now. I will just pin that link up there. But uh, it would be cool to do an unboxing for sure. Uh, we got over 100 watching, so welcome, guys. Um, we got 33 upvotes, so if you guys do enjoy the show, we do appreciate the upvotes. What else? We got shot. Hello, shot. Um, uh -uh -uh. GGXL is guessing that it's a three, two, one. We will have to see. He just saying Toonie is now now a zombie. <laughs> hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Um, yeah, I know. I've been getting messages, uh, which we will get it. We will get into for sure. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the saga never ends there. No. Nope. Uh, Tictology says, "Hey, JJ." We got, by the way, Tictology, I'm mailing you out tomorrow. Tictology was last month's winner. Yeah. Just so you know, the uh, month before was uh, Lone Star. So congrats. Um, I will be mailing out his, uh, his winner. I just put the uh, scroll down below. Everybody who enters, uh, who super chats gets entered into the super chat of the day, which goes into super chat of the month. And we're going to run, I know Ali and the and the guys at, in Toyota Mo uh, did a stream. We're going to run that race tonight. And we're also going to run yeah. uh, tonight's race, you know, so we'll do both. I was on that got, part of that stream anyway. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. We got Big Sal in the house. He says, upvote amigos. We got Kent. Yes, PRX. That is what I took. And we got our man Billy in the house. He says, hey, JJ, I'm up today. I go to work at 7 o'clock in the morning. I am up today. Well, I'm glad you are here, Billy. We love when Billy's in the house. And we got our man Bright Blue Comet in the house. Welcome, welcome. We got Chris J saying hello from Canada. We got DL Farms. And we got Mike, of course. Mike David from New Zealand. Hello from the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got Simon says wristwatch. How's it going? Uh, he says, hi, guys. Have a great show. She is from Hong Kong. We got people all over the place. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Jeff Lane. We got... The whole crew is in the house. We got Basil's Bezels. We got NATO. Uh, <laughs> NATO. 
who did I ban the other day? I banned someone. He goes, why did you ban him? I just wrote because. And like, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't finish why, but I just thought it was funny that I just wrote because. So I left it like that. And we have a super sticker starting it off from Billy Piccolo. Thank you, Billy. Appreciate hey, that. Hey, Billy. Uh, we got Sam Arx5 saying bonjour, mes amis. Marco is excited about that. Thank you for upvoting. We do appreciate that. We're up to 42. We're almost halfway there. Uh, we got Aaron in the house. Says hello from Belfast. Hello. Uh, I, are we caught up? No. Boy, you, up. Aaron, you were up late. <laughs> or maybe early. Yeah. Yeah. He's up, he's up late or early. We got Rangers fans in the house. Says hello from Ringt, Brooklyn. Oh, we got Zeppi. I haven't seen Zeppi in a little bit. He says, hey, boys. Welcome hey. to Zeppi. Good to see Zeppi here. Yeah, I think you know a lot of people are, watch, are watching football. I mean, I've been watching football all day. I took a break after the four o'clock games ended. Uh, I had to do a little running around, but yeah, football season is upon us. My the yeah. fantasy gods were not smiling on me today, Robert. I will tell this, you that this game is pretty much over anyway. <clears throat> this oh, Dallas Giants game. The guy I'm playing has Dallas's defense. They have like 30. Oh points. God. Yeah, that, yeah, I was winning already... until just now, and now I'm getting killed. So, yep. yeah, yeah, not very it, happy 20, about that. Twenty six nothing at the beginning of the third quarter. It's bad. Right, right. We have Chelsky in the house. Says hello from Hastings, UK. We have Seb Nelly. Says champs. How's Mister GMT? Mister GMT is good. He's been very busy working, but we love our GMT, and we hope um, he comes and joins us at at some point. The good thing is his busy season's almost over. Right, right. Yeah. Then we got our GMT back. Aaron Cooper says, it's late 2.40 a.m., but your show is worth it. Thank you, Aaron. Hey. Well, hey, if you fall asleep, you could always catch the replay. But we do appreciate you staying up and hanging with us. And we got, uh, this is one of my favorite names, Artie Langenzoon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did I put too much money on the Steelers today? I should stick to betting on Super Bowl coin tosses. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. why would you bet on the Steelers against San Francisco? Come on. Yeah, that's a rough one. San Fran is uh they, they look dynamite this year. I can't wait to yeah. see if the Niners play the Cowboys. That's gonna be a good a good game there. So log jam wants to know what's on the wrist. I got the PRX, the Tisso PRX. Well, you know, I decided to buy a gold day date. It's a Casio Gold Day Day. Oh, trick us, <laughs> trick us, trick us. And what about you, Mister Butcher? What do we got on the wrist today? We have the Speed Speedmaster Racing. I think you're uh, muted, uh, Jeremy. Yeah. There, you there go. we go. Yeah, uh, Speedmaster Racing. I've been wearing. I've been at the racetrack uh, from Friday till just a few hours ago. So. I've been uh, I've been wearing this guy. So, so how would you do at the racetrack? Uh, it was a, a driver's uh, education event. So I was mm -hmm. instructing some people that never driven on track before, and then just having some fun in my my car. So it was a great weekend. So, That's awesome. Yeah. Would you consider giving Mike the Snake some lessons so he doesn't crash any of his cars? <laughs> <laughs> As long as, I'm, as long as I can wear my helmet, <laughs> it won't do any good. So, <laughs> just want just want to know. Just curious, you know. Um, he's a, I he's felt a really bad. I, I made a guy sick in my car. I oh took no! Him for a ride, and he was like, did, he's he didn't did, actually throw up, but man, he looked really green when he got out. Did he do this? When the when the rear wheel cleared the sand, it grabbed the road again, and then it flicked the bike and slammed the bike right over, and, and I went like, flying like Superman through the air about 70, 80 feet, and then I hit the ground and rolled and rolled and flew me and flicked me right off the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my faves. One of my faves there. He's been flicked. Yes. Yes, he has been for sure. Uh, hey, we have Carrie H in the house. Welcome, Carrie. She says hello, hey. all. And Peter Wood Woodman, right? Did I say that right? Woodman just got Woodman. the PRX today, ordered one for the wife. Amazing watch. His bracelet is out of this world for the price. I agree, sir. I yeah, I've been saying it's the best value at that price point. Uh, watch out there for quite a long time, I think, since it first came out. 
I think and Tiso and all has been a really good value at that price point the last year or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was, that was my first Swiss Swiss introduction to luxury watches. Easy Swiss, easy for me to say swish. Oh Lord. Swish. It's one of those. Basketball numbers. season's about over, sir. No, it is over. <laughs> it's about okay. to begin again in November. All right. That's how much I pay attention to. <laughs> <laughs> Artie has a nice uh, perpetual calendar on the wrist today. Nice. But that, nice. Uh, 5970 on. Beautiful piece. Mm. Beautiful piece indeed. Um, so, yeah, first, I guess we will. Uh, what do we have here? We have Sweet Jojo. Hello, hey, Sweet Jojo. gentlemen. Hey, guys. Good to talk to you all. How are you? I just thought, good, good. I just thought I'd check in and um, say, look, uh, JJ, I'm off to uh, collect on Nelson's Promise lunch. Today, right. and um, I know that you also are on a promise of a chair, and right. I can look, I can heartily recommend I, IKEA. There's an IKEA over my side of town, and they have excellent chairs for all shapes and sizes. I actually bought one when we uh, set up our new house. So, if you can jump on, oh, I'm happy to mention it to Archie. That you, I spoke to you and, and thoroughly recommend an IKEA chair because I have a ten year guarantee. Right now, you got to realize also guarantee. Toyota Mo also paid for a chair, so exactly. We, so yes, we'll need yes. like a, a so, double cha- a double chair, you know, a du- double the value. Yes, you know? yes. So I think a two hundred Aussie or one fifty Aussie. What are you thinking? Price-wise. That's fair. Yeah, you know, whatever you think. I'll leave it to your discretion. You hold them to it. Okay. I'll tell him that I've spoken to you. Um, yeah. We agree that an IKEA chair has a sufficient uh, level of quality uh, and uh, workmanship for his girth, and <laughs> hopefully he will make good on the second promise. Yeah, and if it doesn't really um, hold up well, I think that would also be funny as well. <laughs> you know? Exactly. We also have an office works over this side of town, which has a lot of budget sort of uh, budget sort of entry level type things. But he's the uh, he's the pontiff, you know. And uh, you guys went out of your way to look after him, and I think he should get a quality chair in honour of yourself and Toyota Mo. So I I'll, I'll be, be recommending great. that. I think it would be it would be great if you do get him to, um, you know, pick up a chair. Oh. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. My, sorry, yeah. my audio cut out for a second. I think it would be great if you do get him to pick up a chair today. If you uh, want to gonzo stream him, you know, picking it out, that would be pretty funny. I'm very shy, as you know. I'm a I'm a gutless cow. He doesn't like my face on camera, so I'm no, extremely no, no. shy. You, you, you face it at him. You just face it at him, like like uh, when Steve Irwin is in the wild, right? And he's looking at like. I'd be happy you know, actually. I'd be happy. Oh, look, I mentioned that to him. I'd be happy to do that. It may mean that I get a ride in the Beamer. Um, and I can gonzo that and uh, send it to him, and uh, I can sit in the back seat eating an ice cream and drinking a latte. Yeah, it would be, it would just be a lot film, of fun. Film him like a wild boar in, in the in the wild in the wilderness, you know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I think that would be entertainment for all. We could do that from here, you know. I I, but I'm I, glad I 100% that he's, um, agree. So we got a couple of super I'm chats here, uh, sweet Jojo. Yeah. You're br- you're bringing in the cash. We got. Uh, Jeremy Butcher uh, with ten dollars super chat says for the girth. I think that's for the chair. <laughs> yeah. about the girth of the yeah, chair. for the girth. For the girth. Yeah. We need extra extra accommodation for the girth. That's right. And then we have uh, twenty dollars Canadian from our friend Nelson Oliveira, who says, "Hey Jojo and JJ, hope all is well." Thank you, Nelson. Everything's fantastic, mate. I'm so happy to um, I'm so happy to be getting this this promise. And Nelson, you are a wonderful dude, um, real gentleman. Lovely guy. He's always been in my corner, despite all the uh, all the shenanigans and fun times, and all the crazy and wild accusations. Nelson's always been there, and um, I say thank you, Nelson. If I had a hat on, I'd tip it to you, mate. And um, I'm going to really enjoy this lunch today, especially the beer and the uh, and I'll try not to leave any leftovers. Okay. I'm- Order an extra sandwich plastic at the end and just lick it once and be like, no, I'm too full. <laughs> it doesn't bother him, mate. I'll tell you now, I've left, I've left, um, oh, you got no idea. He doesn't care, mate. He'll just eat it. He's, uh, he's very, <laughs> he's, he's a value shopper. Okay. So, uh, that's what he is. So it'll be fun. Right. 
you know, we got a, we got a ten dollar super sticker from Mookie of a hippopotamus in a in a chair, an office chair. Very nice. <laughs> can we get can we get to uh, uh, that? Would be awesome if we could get those characters in the race. I don't know oh, where Ali is yeah. to set that up. That would be funny. That would be good. Oh, hippos! <laughs> That'd be good. In the office chair. Yeah, hippos in the office chair. <laughs> so t- Tyler is saying that Tony the Tugger works for Heavy Machine Company now. What do you think about this whole timepiece uh, gentleman thing, uh, Plastic? I, I don't think we've asked you. Um, wh- what do you think that he's still selling watches? What do you make of that? Uh, it's, it's, it's abominable. It's obscene. It's a disgrace. And um, it's absolutely... Look, the wizard, um, we all learn from the wizard. Mm-hmm. And I think um, I think you can't you just can't trust these these cunts who don't have a who don't have a real physical presence um, and who are doing deals over Instagram and via text message and robbing Peter to pay Paul, all that sort of bullshit. Um, it was a it may not have started out as a Ponzi scheme, but it fucking sure ended up as a Ponzi scheme and the guy was laughing on your stream about how people have given him the watches. How do you prove it's a fucking thing? It just just hold the arrogance of the guy, the lies, the fucking, um, the heartache and just, you know what it's like, JJ. If we, if, as Rolex collectors, as watch collectors, as enthusiasts, if we lost a watch or some cunt fucking extor- um, robbed us or, you know, or swindled us, we'd be fucking absolutely um, filthy and, and, and out for blood, mate. And I just I just think this guy has to be fucking shut up and silenced. And um, and I just, the, the sooner the, the cops, whoever uh, gets him off the streets, the better. He's a fucking piece of work. He's an animal. Absolutely mm-hmm. um, deserves to be uh, locked up and, um, and in jail for what he's done. Now, he sent out... Um... <laughs> He sent out a message that said, I'm back in the watch game on his Instagram, right? See, now, yeah. someone had confronted him about, like, see these posts? I don't, well, I don't know if you can see your screen, but the posts up here of all these watches, his argument is, well, I don't have any sale price sell, for sale prices on these. So are they for sale? So if you're playing that game, it's like, well, you know, what are you doing? Why are you posting these watches if they're not for sale? Like, in his story... Um, let me see if I could scroll up a little bit. Uh, let's see here. He has, like, I think somebody messaged me and said he has two watches for sale, right? Now he yeah. has two Breitlings up right now, and he has this date just. So my thing is, like, who is crazy enough to still buy from him at this point? Like, Well, not it- only that, but he's crazy enough to give him um, stock. And, and, and uh, what are the terms? Is he Has he managed to swindle some... You know, uh, mom and pop jewelry store, and, and make them think that he's a legitimate businessman, or you know, is he is he found someone who's clueless as, as to what he's alleged to have done? Well, I mean, that's um, where it's, it's scary. You know, you don't know who is who is um, conning right now. You know? Well, now here, here's the thing. It's like this is what happened when he moved to a different platform when he went to TikTok. Like a lot of the people who got screwed the second time didn't even know about like the media blackout and all the YouTube. That's stuff exactly because- right. Yeah. So a new market, a hundred percent. Yep. A new market and a whole new stable of suckers. It's terrible, man. Fucking yep. terrible. Now we have our man Ali joining us. I feel whole again. Ali is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Ali. How are you, buddy? What's up, boys? How you doing, Jojo? Sweet Jojo. Doing well. We're, we're trying. To, we're trying to convince Sweet Jojo to live gonzo stream archie buying the chair that me and toyota mo chipped in for him to buy um like a wild boar out in the in the field and like he could like describe him like steve Irwin. you know oh, oh, well, yeah. speaking of steve Irwin, i saw um tan's beautiful stingray strap uh on the stream yesterday beautiful beautiful strap uh shout out to tan yeah tan had uh, had a beautiful i actually got to try on tan's <laughs> perpetual calendar with the uh 5172 uh blue uh new buck strap that was that was awesome tan was I really think cool guy, by did, the way we did had confirm he had the he did confirm he had the steve Irwin edition <laughs> oh god it came with it our house soon that's too soon harpoon clasp <laughs> <Wow. laughs> oh man you guys a tough crowd here it's bad so we got a super chat from... <laughs> we, we got a super chat 
We got a super chat from our man, Bubba Hotep, $5. He says, I had the most fascinating lunch today with a retired deaf OBGYN. He was the best in his field due to his precise ability to read his patient's lips. Fantastic. <laughs> I thought I was going to hell earlier today. Now I know I'm definitely going to hell. Is, yep. Doing good work here. Um, yeah, I don't know how to read lips too. It's a, it's a really good skill. So being that we're talking about uh, Anthony um, and the wizard was brought up, a uh, Rangers fan asks, how is the wizard doing now? I am in a, still in a WhatsApp group of people who are owed money. And uh, I think it was last week or a few days back. At least, uh, it was probably last week because I've been away for a week. So um, somebody did contact us. I don't want to say who exactly, but one of the people who he's owed money to got paid off a, a portion and – they said they're about five hundred dollars away from being paid off fully, and I guess he's moving on to the next person. So, you know, not exciting news. There's no lynchings or anything, but he is slowly but surely paying some people some at a time. I mean, I really don't have much other news than that. But um, if he's yeah. still paying people, even if it's a slow roll, it's better than nothing. And um, you know, people obviously for that one, it's almost a civil suit, isn't it? You, if you're in America and you got fucked by a guy in Canada, I mean, really, you've got no recourse but to um, uh, to try and uh, take them out and, and through the civil courts. Otherwise, you um, are just going to, you know, lose your money because if you go criminal on the guy, he'll um, he'll just have to hire a defence attorney and and uh, take it down uh, down that road. So it's it's complicated. But if he's slow rolling, I guess it's better than nothing, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's always oh, someone getting paid back versus never getting paid back is always better in my eyes. I know people don't want to hear that. They think it's uh, you're appeasing them or you're sticking up for them. But which, you know, we're not. I am definitely wouldn't tell anyone to ever buy watches from him again. But uh, I'm happy at least some people are getting some money at some point. You know, it's not ideal, but it is better than uh, nothing. I haven't heard any updates. I got to actually get in. I'm going to try to get in touch with uh, Wesley or Bob. Or see, I don't think they've gotten any more money back at all. Um, so I'm not that sure. That ship has sailed, JJ. You can tell that that ship has sailed. That, 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 that guy is just fucking. He's stashed well, he, some watches away, I believe. I think he's he's definitely got himself a little like, an, an exit plan when it all dies down. There's probably uh, half a million or a million dollars worth of watches or cash stashed somewhere. It has to be, mate. There just has to be, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think I don't think I mean yeah. maybe there like it makes sense to a lot of people that there would be, but um, I don't I don't think there is. I think he's just if too I high do it, profile and too, uh, a narcissist. Ali, I do sort of agree with you, but if they, if they can get to, if they can somehow get an investigation where every single one of those watches they can sort of do a trial. I mean, you're talking we're not talking thousands of watches or hundreds of watches, are we? We're talking um, what's Fuck. When, when we think the real amount's what two or three million, what's that about? Maybe forty, fifty no, watches. No, no. After, right? they, after they did the math, five million seems like it actually is the real amount. Right. So if we average that out um, at a hundred thousand or say fifty thousand dollars a watch, so we're talking uh, what's that? Fuck. Thousand? Is that a thousand? Or a hundred? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I was reading the chat. What did you, what it was would be hundred thousand. It would be hundred thousand a watch. Yeah, hundred thousand a watch. So five million. So what's that? That's fifty, 50 watches. Fifty, yeah, 50, 50 watches. watches. So yeah. if you can sort of track down it's like a each person, full. and then each serial number, each situation, and then buyers and sellers where the watches allegedly went, then that's a way to find out what is sort of left and what hasn't been accounted for. And that's what's been stashed, you know, possibly. Yeah, maybe, possibly. but here's the, there are a couple things about this that are just driving me utterly insane. One is that um, if according to the Reddit, I mean, people on the Reddit are just all over this guy, like white on rights, right? So he's being seen in public in different cities with different people. He's in dealer chats, including he still runs his own fairly like highly high volume dealer chat. Then, some people point out, rightfully so, and I'm actually learning about some of this firsthand because I'm now in a couple of dealer chats myself um, for research, not in the business, not getting in the business. But there's like no repudiation of anybody who gets in a dealer chat. The only repudiation is when they do a deal, right? So 
people rightly so are like, well, he could be in the dealer chats doing one deal at a time under a given uh, uh, pseudonym or identity. And, and he, it will be perfectly fine. He can continue to operate this way until somebody like points it out. So, oh, we lost, uh, we lost sweet Jojo. Yeah, he'll be back. That's okay. Um, I actually so wanted to ask just like, Oh, good. I'm sorry. Continue. So the whole, whole thing smells like there's, there's other people involved that are help propping this up. Like mm-hmm. that's definitely what it smells like. There's other people involved who are help propping this up for some reason. The whole, the whole, I don't know, to me, like, uh, I wanted to pull up Shonoff's comment when he says between TPG, Alpha Crown, who, for those who don't know, actually, Ali, do you have that article about Alpha Crown anywhere? I can uh, pull it up. Yeah, if you can, while, while I just finish this thought, that would be cool. Let's just switch the screen up a little bit. Um, between TPG, Alpha Crown, and Wristwatcher, for those who don't know, that's a local uh, Staten Island dealer, the Wristwatcher. He does a lot of work with uh, uh, Roman, I'm pretty sure, as well. Um it says the amount of robberies lately is insane. I agree. And you know what's funny? Oh, speaking of, well, I don't know. Speaking of funny, Brian's here. <laughs> that oh, was it's best. Brian. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Brian. Brian. There that, was, that was one of my worst segues of all time. But oh, hey, man, Brian. whatever. Speaking Bye. of robbery, yeah, that wasn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, so, guess what? I, <laughs> what's up? Real quick. I hit yeah. 10,000 subscribers on my channel today. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Excellent. Congratulations, buddy. Thank uh, you. I hope, I hope there's more serial killers in the future. <laughs> yeah. So you well, can get been, more popular. No, We've I'm been just, chasing I'm around this idiot that's been uh, <laughs> escaped from Pennsylvania for the past five days. So <laughs> I've run some pretty <laughs> long streams. But anyway, I digress. Nice, nice. <laughs> I, I've actually been in some of Ryan's streams. It's yeah. been interesting for me to to see that other like not watch youtube for a while yeah it's pretty cool actually uh i I gotta i gotta pay a little more attention to that i think i would like getting into that kind of stuff but before i don't want to lose my train of thought i want to get more into brian's thing because that is awesome but let's we'll segue into from the next problem i saw the alpha crown thing right the wristwatcher thing i already know happened I, I remember the video they came in with the 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 you know the jammers and all that stuff and it was it was pretty wild you know it was definitely you know it looked like pro style work from the video i mean minus the fact that they forgot to shut off that one camera that actually caught them <laughs> doing it but other than that it looked pretty pro um and i was thinking to myself as well like there's a, not that i necessarily believe this about anyone in particular but overall with the amount of people putting in these claims and getting robbed right could it have something to do with the fact that all their inventory is now worth less money because prices have come down so hard in the last year that they are making some type of inside moves to cash out insurance i to me that's my you know you're not the only one who's talking about that man. My, my my like i don't have a criminal brain i don't want to say my criminal brain but if i were a criminal <laughs> like that's just how i think like not even criminal just like my criminal detector went off right it's like all right all these people all of a sudden are all getting robbed it's like and all they all happen to be down on every piece they own it's too coincidental to so to, so like i said man i've, I've joined for research you know? purposes right i've joined some some dealer chats and uh, two of the dealer chats I'm in again, not trying to get in dealing, but they are, there is a pay to play, right? Yeah. And I've noticed because the total count of people that are participating is that like they've had two to 5% drop off. Anthony's uh, back, yeah, in the the back in the game. Uh, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. Sorry, I dropped out before lads. I just had the big fella ring just to confirm uh, the meeting time. And I just saw it. Sorry to derail the chat. I just want to show you this IKEA chair. I've had this for four years. I spoke to Archie as well. Yeah. So this is the chair. He's buying this your is quite a, chair. This is from IKEA. <laughs> he's buying right? your used. He's buying your used chair plastic. No, he's going to buy a new. No, 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 no. I want to show oh, you yes. what I bought from IKEA about nearly four years ago. Now, do they make a wider version of this? I That's pretty so. wide. It's it's my, my I've I've got a fairly ample derriere and it just sits me okay. Um, that's that's what I'm wearing to the lunch. Got the bluesy oh. on. Nice. So it'll be an unofficial bluesy brothers meetup. We'll have oh. our bluesies on. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. 
So, yeah, this is a nice chair from Ikea, 10-year warranty. Pretty much so. If, you, if they ever fucking break down, they'll, um, they'll replace them. You know, they'll come out and fix it for you. So, yeah, there you go. How so, many boxes did it come in? Just the just <laughs> one. I think it came in maybe two. Uh, one flat pack, you know, one for the base. So they got these big bases, you know, um, these big bases. I think it might have come in two. Not bad. So I want to get back to Ali's thought here on this because we were kind of like right on the. Uh... I know, my bad. I'm going to go okay. now, fellas. Lovely to talk to you. Um, I'll I'll fill you in uh, about the lunch next time I come on. Okay. Bye, See you guys. Love you. Bye, plastic. Stay sexy, boys. So Hoff makes a good point, and then I want to get back to what Ali was saying before he got interrupted. I didn't mean to throw you off, Ali. I just wanted to show Brian full screen to read that while you were talking. I thought that would be a good juxtaposition, but I think I fucked everything up. So he says, uh, the crazy part is they were just on Tim's trying to defend watch consignments, and a week later that happened. Now, of course, they're getting dragged through the mud. Yeah, I mean, that's par for the course when you go on stupid channels. You do, you know, you know stupid uh, actions have stupid uh, consequences. Play stupid games. Yeah, win play stupid games, prizes. win stupid prizes. Speaking of stupid prizes, we got to do this super chat of the day from um, <laughs> the other show when I wasn't here. So we'll, do, we'll run that maybe uh, in a little bit, and then we'll do the, oh, we could run them both at the end, actually. We'll run them both at the end. <laughs> Dirk says, so, JJ, you went to Aruba and got no son. What do you mean I got no son? <laughs> I don't look kind of... <coughs> No? No, you look like you got son. Well, you definitely uh, look like you got son. Uh, I, I am. I don't look kind of... I, uh, That's JJ's so the, modeling, the, modeling there. No, you do look like you, you got son, man. But I do I do want to finish that thought because you're not yeah. the only one thinking that. The So some of the paid dealer chats, as Marco said, right? I'm nobody, so I got to actually pay to get in on um, they're bleeding people, like a lot of people. Now, uh, uh, you know, Buckley was obviously kind enough to be on our show. I'm in his paid dealer chat. They're not bleeding people, and but they're definitely like, they're more on top of it than the other dealer chat. The other, I'm in three paid dealer chats. So the other two that I'm in, they're more on top of warning people about fraud and like their population. Now they're a little bit smaller than one of them and a lot smaller than the other one. But the other two are bleeding people, man. People are exiting. So mm-hmm. even in there, some of the people that are talking, not Gukums, but in some of the other ones, they're talking about, you know, some of this stuff is just people exiting with insurance fraud and stuff like that. They're, they, they, they're flat out saying it. They believe that to be the case. Um, yeah, it, it makes sense, right? Like if you paid 50000 for a watch a year ago and you haven't sold it yet for whatever reason, now it's worth thirty five. You know, it might pay to make it disappear. You know, whether right or wrong. We have a two dollar super chat from Zeppi. He says, "Where's the Alpha Crown robbery video footage?" I don't know if there is any. Actually, I want to pull that back up because we didn't read that. Uh, did you? Did anyone see any video footage of that? I don't think there is. I know just the wristwatcher Joey. There was that video. And I'm not aware that there is. Yeah, not that I know of. Didn't they get like stuck up at gunpoint? Is that the the Wolven brother? Uh, they were ex partners, right? That is the same people, right? Um, it, well, they, oh yeah, violent armed robbery is what they're saying. The Alpha. Right. And then we have the hot watcher with two dollars. He says, "How is TPG still selling watches? That's crazy." I think it's just a matter of getting to people that don't follow the internet. I mean, no, there are people. Dude, it's not that easy. I'm telling you. There are people who do follow that do know, and they're the same type of people that are simps for you know for women who are have daddy issues and like mm-hmm. drug histories and stuff like that. The same type of dudes who think they can rescue anybody, they are simps for TPG and they think that they can rescue TPG, mm-hmm. right? They think that they can be part of this comeback story. They're there. There's like legitimate people that know everything with good money that are willing to give this guy more money. What is the ROV on that though? Like I don't. That's what I'm trying to understand. Like what? What do you what? mean? Oh, the value of the watch? No, well, I'm just you... saying. No, the return on investment to invest in this fucking guy. And oh, you know, I, I, what's I the return on investment for people who for simps that are trying to save every stripper out there? Well, this this is the same conundrum as OnlyFans, right? It's like why does somebody yes. pay, um, you know, fifty dollars a video when porn is free, like absolutely right. everywhere? But it's and the answer is uh, probably the same answer. 
that connection, that interaction, right? Even though it's probably not the girl that you it's all it's all automated, it's all synthetic, it's all right. Right. Yeah. So it's but like, I'm just saying it's like you know it's not the girl actually answering you, it's probably some like dude that, that she pays <laughs> to like answer. But in in your head, you still want that connection. It's the same thing. It's like I want to be cool, he's cool, he, everybody knows him. I want to watch from him, even though I might get robbed, you know. Um, I guess you know there's you know there's an ass for every seat, right? But uh, you know, sometimes yeah, Kevin, Kevin in the house. <laughs> hey, Kevin, welcome. And we got a two dollar super chat from our man Quicker. He says two one seven oh two hundred seventeen watching right now. Please consider upvoting. Thank you for your super chat. Greatly appreciated. We're actually up to two twenty four right now. So nice, very good, guys. If you are enjoying the show, we always do appreciate those upvotes. They do help push us out. And uh, we're actually going to have a nice giveaway uh, at five thousand. We're three hundred subscribers away. So. Nice. The more we uh, the more we push out, the better. And if you're not subscribed for some crazy reason, I suggest you do so. Uh, we, we are giving uh, away a limited edition Seiko Save the Ocean watch. Mm-hmm. Beautiful watch. Uh, GMT comes with an extra strap. It's a really, really nice, beautiful blue watch. Yeah. yeah. And I'm ready it's... to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like that idea. I like it. I mean, it's a, it's a great prize. So now th- this is the... Um, this is the article. Um, now, I want, where did Zeppi go? Zeppi, uh, oh, Zeppi, where did, I don't know where it went. Um, but he, he had asked, how is there no footage, basically? You know, there's cameras everywhere. I call BS. This is what he's saying. Now, I believe, I don't know, was this outside? I believe it was outdoors, right? They got stuck up. And they lost $550,000 worth of pieces. It says it wasn't all their inventory, but it was a good amount. So, I guess uh, that's just craziness. Sounds like a TPG situation. Uh, I mean, well, he robbed himself. <laughs> he robbed himself. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Ali. Appreciate that. Ten members. Pretty much. And we have a super chat from LTL Podcast. It says JJ, don't break my kneecaps. Your kneecaps are safe another week. Thank All you right. for tith- tithing at the Church of JJ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, amen, because I have no reason to make accusations. <clears throat> um, but the if you are interested, the TPG, the TP gentleman subreddit has a lot of people commenting on the Alpha Ground robbery. <clears throat> There isn't a lot of information out there. Yeah, I, I need to look into that. People more. are very skeptical. But the thing is, is I, I look at this as it, you know, these companies that try to set themselves as, up as legit companies, right? Legit dealers or, or gray market. Why risk something like this, like your reputation, just to what? Get your name out there and 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 you know try to get some attention on you? Is this is you know why risk that? And that's why I say, what is the return on investment to do things like this if it, if this is allegedly a, a crime? So, so Brian, let's actually use your your current story with Danello, right? Sure. You've got a guy who is streaming constantly in the field. You know who I'm talking about. You've got about yeah. right. Yep. He has he has his own Wikipedia page with his very interesting background. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people that are moving from one grift to another that are like maybe deep down they're completely legitimate right but they just haven't hit a stride and a lot of these people showed up during covid Mm -hmm. they're exiting now that it's over and now that the boom's over right and this is just the second or third or fourth industry or grift that they're in now i don't know again the alpha crown Wolven brother whatever i'm not saying that about these people right but a majority of them the dealer chats that i see are generally a little bit older they're our age or older They've been at it for a while, and they've been slow rolling it, and they've never been into the big social media aspect. So the majority of them are completely legit. It's the ones that have turned it into a lifestyle event mm. where they're a shit fluencer, right, mm. that we have to keep an eye on. So then you have ones like you know, Roman and Nico mm-hmm. who, again, like they're, they, they are front and center, but in the case of Leaf Luxury Bazaar, have been around for ages. Right. Right, and Nico's been around for quite a while now too, um, mm-hmm. but not nearly as long as you know Roman, obviously. Um, All right. No, so got... it's just go for yeah. it. No, I was just going to say we got bright blue uh, comment chiming in here, and I think this is a pretty good uh, thing to pull up. He says the Alpha Crown guys were selling themselves way too hard. It was sweaty. My spidey senses is up. 
do you think now this is just another you know look i'm not i'm not again this is not me accusing anyone of anything this is just what's on people's minds there's speculation out there with all this stuff going on but do you think the breakup with josh um and those guys maybe affected their ability to sell watches or to make money and, sure. they, had, and they had to yeah, maybe had to make a a, a, a a rash decision. I mean, it's very possible. You know, desperate times call for desperate measures. They don't just I, say that for no reason. So it's not a surprise to people who know me and we've talked about it on air. Like I got into quote unquote private industry shortly before COVID. I've been in private industry, my own enter, you know, my own enterprises for all that long. But the very first business that tried to get going, uh, me and two partners, one of the three partners had a severe disagreement right and it killed all business that we had because nobody none of the clients wanted to be involved in shoot picking sides none of the partners wanted to be involved in the drama everybody's like hey we hope this works out we'd love to work with all of you again but it, everything evaporated so absolutely if you're in one of these situations the same thing can happen and when it does everything evaporates and suddenly your cash flow goes from like a good six maybe seven figures a month to nothing yeah. And you get desperate real quick. And in the case of that third partner, he got desperate to the tune of leaving a family of 10 children behind, like in a field in New Jersey. That's how desperate he got. That's terrible. Yeah, yeah it is terrible. But, like, so insur- but at that point, like insurance fraud seems easy at that point. Right. Well, that, that's the thing. It's like people who are comfortable can't imagine like, oh, well, why would you do this? It's like, well, you're in a comfortable position. So you, you don't understand why someone would do that. Like, you know, there's there's different degrees of you know necessity um that arise and you know desperation seems to make you make rash decisions that you wouldn't normally make speaking of rash decisions we have reg with the two dollars <laughs> that, that broccoli pizza left a rash <laughs> yeah. he says hugs to the crew need to work tonight that means that's that's code for Ari sleeping on the couch he's in the oh. dog house just kidding, Ari. Be well, my friend. Be well, my good, friend. Good, good thing he's got a nice laundry room to sleep in. Yes. yes yeah. See, Tyler <laughs> says the Navarro brothers took all their business. Josh and Mike were left with an expensive lease. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of things that, you know, point to the obvious. It's like, hmm. Well, I will say this blanket statement, having been in a... Uh, an entrepreneur for most of my life, most partnerships do not work out in the end. Just whether, whether how, however they got started, very few of them actually work out. So, okay. So I don't want to get too derailed on this journey, but most businesses don't work out in the end period. Oh, sure. So when people say things like most partnerships, I, the thing is like most 50, 50 partnerships don't work out because you need to have somebody with like a final say Correct. Right. Like those seven things. I just, but partnerships are remarkable if you have the right partner. Correct. It, uh, as long as they're, as long as you have a, a clear facilitation, you know. Yeah. And, and even having things like an arbitration agreement at the founding of certain types of companies is, is not a bad Matt, deal, but I don't want to get too far on that side. But this thing with fair is driving me crazy. Like, because the Sims are out there giving him money, they're going to continue to give him money. And as they continue to give him money, the desperation of other dealers that are just getting caught up in the continued slow crash, they're going to do business with people like Anthony and these other folks because they're desperate. Because they don't even have the inventory to pull insurance fraud if that's how desperate they are. Right? So you're seeing dealer chats where chats where people are, are clearly like either adjacent to Anthony or directly involved with Anthony. And it's picking up because that's the outlet they need. They need something. I think what's happening a lot is like these with these consignment pieces and um, not to point out like uh, my Marco in particular, but we'll just use him for an example. Let's say you want to consign a piece with Marco, right? And you want an ex- a good amount of money where he don't feel like there's enough meat on the bone for him to se- be actually be able to sell it and make money. So why waste time doing the pictures and posting it on their website and doing all this work when it's not going to sell, right? So they're like, look, we don't really think it's going to work unless you sell it for this price. Now they go to a guy like one of these backpack guys who just want inventory, right? And they'll sell it for whatever you want. They don't care if they take two hours to 
take pictures and write up a little piece and put it on their website. Makes their website look bigger. Right. (laughs) So they're more willing to do the things that someone like maybe Marco is like, doesn't want to be bothered with. Right. And that's why these people reach out to the TPGs for consignment and, you know, this stuff. I think that's really um, where greed slash desperation get the best of people. Um, I don't know. I'm just curious. Uh, Matthew, I'm not sure what he, uh, he says. What is the point of the state? What's the point of the stage? I don't know. What, what do you mean? Well, his next comments about Roman. So maybe it's it's like, what's the point of having the stage? And I don't know. I mean, I don't agree with that statement. His next comment. Oh, Roman I, is shady as hell. Awesome. I don't, I'm not even sure what he's saying, but I mean, if you can gather it into like a full thought, I would gladly pull it up and discuss it. I just don't know what, what you mean. Uh, also, so, can the, can the Giants please <laughs> score a fucking touchdown, please? I'm it's football four, season. I'm so four, from, I'm losing by now, four or... points, and it's because the defense I'm playing is 33. If they just would score a touchdown, I'd win. Now until February, we are gonna like half. <laughs> uh, that's right. I'm gonna. I turned my fantasy feed off. Seconds. I couldn't handle it. I'm actually winning by two. Man, go Tony Pollard. Uh, <laughs> but uh yeah i don't know i just don't Par- partnerships are finding your 20s jesse james says it teaches you to have investors in your 30s yeah that makes sense i, I guess if you're, you're if you're in a partnership getting an investor and hiring your own boss hiring your first ceo it's like a it's a, it's a good idea it's a big deal yeah so I have a, a question. Uh, TPG still has a website up with a crap ton of watches. You and if you it? pull up the Alpha Crown website, they right. look surprisingly f- familiar. Like you're looking at the same site, but just different. It, uh, half of them are like Wix. Uh, half of them are like Wix websites, dude. I'm like, yeah. like, is there any correlation here? Well, a lot of times, like these watches will be like you know watches that they could just get. You know, like uh, maybe they're offered in a website or someone has them available, like that they could just pick up pretty much. You know, a, a lot of what he's done or what he used to do <clears throat> was he would go around to jewelers or jewelry stores in the area. And you saw a lot of this on his videos where he would just take the watch, take a video of it, and then he would post it acting like he owned it. So he's just, I mean, you guys know this. He's basically just becoming a middleman, taking a percentage of the cut, selling it for the dealer or the jeweler. And like he never really had a lot of that inventory in his inventory. And you saw that in the earlier days and you saw that towards the end when he was kind of fizzling out. That's what he was doing. <clears throat> so Marco says that a lot of the websites do this. It's just to generate inquiries that they don't actually have it in stock, which I've heard, you know, you see that a lot also like on Chrono 24. If you follow, it'll say like upon request. Which means they'll go look for one for you if you're willing to pay this price. They'll see if they can mm-hmm. get one for cheaper. So, and I know that just sounded like Captain. O- okay, Captain Obvious, but you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Not like <laughs> Captain Obvious. He's a good character. <laughs> so I, you know, Matthew didn't really expand on that prior comment, but he asked, you know, what we think about CRM. It, it, CRM is actually really interesting, right? What do you think of CRM jewelers? They're really interesting because in my area, they've been around forever. Yeah. Right. So that's where um Watch Eric got his start. Yeah, which Watch Eric, you know, got his his start, right? So they've been around forever. And the thing is that when you're that big as CRM is or as long as your bazaar is, you will have more than your fair share of people that love you and more than your fair share of people that hate you. Right. And you will have twice your fair share of turf wars. And this applies to tracks, this applies to LB, this applies to CRM. That's just the way it is. I've always heard, heard good stuff about Carlos. I, I haven't heard anything bad. Yeah, I've, 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 see, the thing is, I've always heard really, really exceptionally good stuff, or they're complete scoundrels. There's like no in between, <laughs> right? It happens that, and in Miami, that's that's the way it is. It happens that way. You have somebody who is influential in a fairly large circle, right? Of like mm-hmm. a, a big spender at a regular restaurant chain has one bad interaction, or what they think is a bad interaction. Then everybody who regularly frequents that given restaurant or bar now hates CRM. That's literally what I've observed. Right? So and it's it's entirely unfair. And luxury bazaar suffers the same thing, and track suffers the same thing, and eco suffers the same thing. 
Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, these places don't have like a million plus customers over this many years because they're complete idiots. For the most part, they're just fine. They do really well. So Matt, he also follows up. What do you think? What are your thoughts on luxury bazaar? <laughs> I've done plenty of interactions with them, and I've always had a pleasant experience. Uh, Me too. And I know m- multiple people who have. I really haven't heard anyone have an actual personal bad experience with them. You know, I've heard like the Ray Ban jokes. Um, that's about the only criticism, or like you know, maybe uh, like Roman's uh, defense of the wizard, <laughs> or that he liked you know liked him, or you know, supplied him with some type of inventory at certain points or purchased inventory from him, whatever you want to say. But personal experience from buying I've or selling, I haven't heard anyone with a bad experience. No, me neither. No. I don't know. I don't know that I can say, like, because I've been on air, I've been critical. I don't think that Roman handled either TPG or the Wizard situation great. But at the same time, I think what most people say about him are wrong. Like, there's no benefit to being on air and being flat out rude. Like, if you get mm-hmm. a gift from Stefano, you open the gift, you thank him for it. Like, that doesn't, by thanking somebody for a gift they sent you, doesn't make you complicit in their crimes, right? No, you know? only a moron like, would think that. Yeah, so I would say I don't know of anybody who has had an experience of Luxury Bazaar that Luxury Bazaar didn't set right, that they've continued to do business with them. And I'm being very specific on verbiage there because I can't say that somebody's never had a had an experience that they weren't happy with, but they've continued to do business with LB because LB made it right, like, instantly. Which I can't say the same thing with a couple of other dealers that I've dealt with. I have one that I had a very good relationship with, and I still have a good relationship with my primary salesperson, but I've done no business with them because the one problem I finally ran into after X number of successive deals, they didn't resolve well. They, like, they really took me for granted in the resolution i can't say the same thing about lb the people i know with lb who had like little things is that they're they continue to go back to lb over and over again because of people like marco because of people like alex because of, you know uh uh uh, uh those the, the individuals there who who set things right they continue to go back no kaz and folks right now what marco is saying is what i agree with this is my biggest problem <laughs> <laughs> problem <laughs> that they don't give enough tr- in trade value and and i get it it's like you know they're only w- they want to make a certain profit margin and you know they're not going to just take inventory like marco said it's nobody's really looking to outright buy right now it's it's mostly trade trade up you know well, three pieces for one and I get it. You have to set up for the future, right? Like if prices continue to go lower, he needs to offer the meta price. But this is why people pivot to people like TPG or someone else who will. But this 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 funny lose moment. your watches. You know? Yeah, pop, exactly. But that funny moment, JJ, is actually. Can we pull Marco's comment back up? Right. Yeah. That funny moment with a nice smiley face of OG is very real. I did a deal recently with Marco. He gave me two choices. We can pay outright, but you're not going to get nearly as much money. We can do consignment. And I don't know what this is what you're probably going to get in consignment if you're willing to wait. He completely up front. I could have gone and gotten squeezed out a couple of nickels elsewhere. Right? But I didn't have the backing of Marco. And certainly Marco then has the backing of Adrian. And Adrian has the backing of Roman. There's kind of a chain of trust, right? It's almost a human blockchain of trust right um mm-hmm. it's worth it and and we make these decisions every day in our lives and i don't know why we don't make them with luxury goods you don't go buy uh uh if you go to dollar general you don't go buy red meat jet dollar general unless you want to shit your brains out for the next few days <laughs> gas station <laughs> right? sushi right? <laughs> yeah exactly it's like, so but when it comes to our watches suddenly we're like no like no 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 like they're doing us wrong no you're paying for a certain amount of quality and trust and history and reputation and all the things that come with it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. And don't go buy your watches a dollar generally. And one thing I do have to say, if you do buy, I mean, look, I'm just speaking from personal experience with, with Marco in general. You know, he's, the, he's the only one I really deal with, uh, you know, uh, from at least from luxury bizarre anyway. Um, when you do buy a watch from him and if you do want to sell it, he does definitely try to help you get as much of your money back as possible or to get you into something else that you want more. You know what I mean? Than if you were to buy it somewhere else. 
So I think uh, having a repeat history with someone definitely, uh, definitely yeah. helps. But I, I, and I don't me, mean to be a dick to like Adrian and Roman or Kevin or Alex or any of these people. Like at the various gray market dealers, I'm going to deal with the same person over and over again. And if they move, chances are I'm moving with them. And Marco's, Marco's are my, at least my boy. They'll be. I want to deal with Roman. Marco won't let me. You give me better prices. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. But um, where, where I want to get go with this, or where I'm, uh, where I think this is going anyway, I'm not necessarily where I want to go is, I think this is, as long as the economy stays uncertain or interest rates stay high or how long you want to look at this, which I think is inevitable. I mean, we couldn't have a run like this forever. Um, the more you're going to see these dealers disappear, like the, all these small dealers, the, you know, that are trying to squeak out a profit. I think you'll see a new set of dealers emerge eventually, but I think this is just going to be a slow waning process. I know this is not what most watch guys want to hear. Like they want to hear the hype, right? Market's going crazy. It's going to continue to go crazy. Um, but that's not what's probably <laughs> going to happen. And I, I mean, think you this, can- this cycles through every four years. Uh, it's almost election season. And every <laughs> election season brings uncertainty to the market all across every industry and especially something like this. Oh, absolutely. Can, can we, can we yeah. JJ, can we pull up a clip from the gray market from a recent episode of the gray market? Yes, we definitely can. And we, we should probably get Marco on for this, but yeah, let's do it. But I, I, we need to actually, we'll so... if he wants to join us. Um, he could act it out in real time. And <laughs> for the sake of, yeah, there you go. You found, you got there for right it. <laughs> so this our, one of my boy, favorite videos. our boy Marco almost got tossed. Mm. Like he got dwarf tossed off the balcony at Luxury Bazaar. Should I play it with audio or without audio? Uh, Yeah, just play with the audio. Roman, don't sue me, bro. You want to tell me what are you sold today? That's right. One hundred and thirty thousand dollar wire just hit. That's pretty That's good. All? That's it, right? That's all. Uh, <laughs> you're, bra- you're breaking it. <laughs> Get me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> if you no, want to. <laughs> all right, now we can. If if you if you would have went through the glass, that would have been fucking insane. I, I mean, he would probably would have got very hurt. So I'm glad he. Did. He didn't, the but... best part of that is when Marco <laughs> comes back in, you can tell he was shaking up. He's like, I didn't expect that. <laughs> uh, it remind, he reminded me of that part in The Sopranos. Remember when they go to the Hasidic hotel and he says he's friends with uh, the, the other partner? Remember they're trying to get the, the son of yeah. the out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, and you're bragging this? <laughs> He says it. To, he says the same thing to Marco. If you replay when he, when he's telling him about how he's how much he sells the watches, why is yeah. that? You want to tell me what are you sold today? That's right. A three hundred and thirty thousand dollar wire just hit. That's pretty That's good. All? That's it, right? That's all. Uh, when you're, bra- <laughs> you're breaking it. <laughs> Get the- <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was not. No. I was not. <laughs> and you're breaking it. I, I oh man, that's killing me. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Marco need to hit the gym a little bit, bro. And Gary, his, he's got the old man strength. His shoulders way up, and he's like, "I just killed Marco." Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "I just killed Marco." Uh, he's like, yeah. "I'm gonna have to learn watches, son of a bitch." Good, good advice, Owl. Always run away from the balcony. <laughs> yes, don't run. I, I had to actually super thanks that because I wanted, I I, I want them to make this a regular event. The, the, Gary actually, should dwarf. What's that? He Gary should, should dwarf toss Marco every episode, <laughs> and we should record his progress. <laughs> I think he actually does. He gives him a couple of. They they have like a recap of like four or five uh, like uh, assaults on Marco. Poor Marco. <laughs> he's getting uh, he's physically beaten over there. It's tough being <laughs> the baby watch dealer. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was great. That was fantastic. We got Blondie in the house. Blondie said he almost face planted. I think so too. <clears throat> so I don't look tan, you guys. 
Yes, you do. You do look like you got it. <laughs> you really go back to something that was like a half an hour ago. <laughs> Maybe it's more lighting, lighting JJ. That'll give it's, us right. a How about that look. Do I look more tan now? I should have that red Light lighting tan? behind you. It makes you glow red. Uh-huh. Oh, speaking of glowing red, we have mm-hmm. Hop on Smash in the house. Hello. Hey. What up, bud? I, I seen the panel was uneven, so I know how that affects I was, you. I was getting the heebie jeebies. <laughs> <laughs> what up, fellas? Hey, Ali. Hey, hey. Congrats what's up, what's on the Ali, 10,000 dude? subs, bro. Oh, thanks, bro. Yeah. I've been, I, I literally ran a stream from seven o'clock this morning. I'm so tired right now. <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> We're doing a, a marathon, marathon, marathon. stream. Yeah. <laughs> Like the Jerry Lewis telethon, right? Remember yeah. those? My they, condolences they, they to every other one. Giants fan, by the way. Are they totally? I think uh, New England uh, lost. Are they not going to score a run? I, I am losing by three quarters of a point. If they just score one touchdown, I will be up by six, and I will I probably know, win unless Pat's Barkley scores. It, but... it is brutal. <sighs> It Can we talk about the uh, the Swatch uh, Blanc Pond thing? Because I still yes. don't want to talk about this. Okay, before we do that, can we do the race? Yeah, let's do the I'm race. Uh, yeah, let's do the race because it's, re- it's relevant to this topic. Okay, let's do the race. We'll do the uh, last <coughs> race, and then we'll do this race at the end of the show. All right, we so have... let me get the race ready. It'll take me 15 minutes. While Ali is doing that, uh, we have reached the one hour mark. Guys, if you are enjoying the stream, we have 63 upvotes, 240 somewhat people watching. So please click the upvote button if you're enjoying the show. Now, what you're about to see, if you read the scrolling script down at the bottom, is at the uh, during each show, everyone who super chats, we keep track of. And at the end of the show, we do a race. And the winner of the su- gets his super chat <clears throat> of the day. I take a photo. I store it. After the mo- At the end of the month, we take the winner from each day and we do a super chat of the month race. Super chat of the month race winner wins a prize. And they also get entered into super chat of the year, which wins a bigger prize at the end of the year. So, so far we've had two winners. Um, last show, we didn't get to do the race. So we are going to do that now for the last show's um, race. This is Toyota Boat Collector's Lounge. And yeah. in honor of the Swatch Blanc Pong releases. We are racing clowns. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now this is going to be for the last show that Toyota Mo ran, the Collector's Lounge. Tonight's show at the end of this stream, we're going to do tonight. So if you do Super Chat during this show, you will be entered into the race at the end of the show. But this is from the last show. So we have 15 entries. We'll give it a shuffle and we'll go. And we're off. Here go the clowns. Bubba Hotep is leading the pack, but not for long. Here comes Neo. Neo is a very quick clown. Patrick B is taking the commanding lead ahead of him, and here comes AD never calling. But here comes Ali Reza out of the backfield. Ali says, I'm not having this. Homie, don't play that. <laughs> here comes Neo getting back his lead. Sam Davidson and Mookie are also coming down the home stretch. But here comes Ali. He's not giving up that quick. He says, out of my way, Bozo. <laughs> Ali's maintaining that lead. He's maintaining it the whole way through. But here comes Basil's bezel. He's got something to say. He says, not today. Here comes Sam it's Davidson. Out of the back of the Congratulations to Sam Davidson. Yeah. Get a picture go. of this for Sam. Oops. They're all crying. <laughs> the clowns are crying. <laughs> How did the clowns at Honor Swatch? There's got to be a 75 <laughs> beetle somewhere all these characters can get into. Yeah. Drive away. Congratulations, right Sam. Clown car. <laughs> you are entered into uh, the contest. And then don't forget, guys, if you uh, super chat tonight, you will be in tonight's contest. Okay, where was I? Mm-hmm. Talking about we your were... tan. <laughs> Am I tan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. go now you're going to just go. <laughs> there, there he is. There's Sam. Congratulations, sir. Send, send in the send clowns. In the clowns. Yeah, there you go. Clowns. Very good. No way. Yeah, happening. They're here. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about that in the last segment happening. Well, by the way, I, I can't find them right now. There's an Instagram account that I absolutely love that always like debunks uh like fake watches and accounts and um Oh, his name's killing me right now, but he, he's shown like watches Daytona's to be fake at Phillips auctions and a bunch of other watches like oh, that. Oh, Presco. 
Yes, Perez scope. That's exactly yeah. who I'm talking about. So yeah. he put out some documentation uh, debating Blanc Punk's uh, claim it to 55 fathoms being, or 50 fathoms being the first dive watch, and was showing a bunch of uh, copyright and trademark papers on there. It's interesting. No one picked that up at first, at all this week. I haven't heard anyone well, talking about. It. So, so first of all, this is who we're talking about. Um, yes. And he's a regular on Young Brando's show, by the way. Like, oh, is he? Yeah. They've done a couple of interviews. He also broke, like, he did the most work on the Omega story, right? The Omega Phillips story. Yep. Um, the, when they I talk also about, want like, to get first... one of those lithographs from him, the history of the sea dweller. Did you ever see those lithos he yeah, does? Yeah, yeah. They're really cool. So he's done some interesting stuff with Young Brando on, uh, like, the first dive watches and stuff. So, yeah, this is what you're talking about, the Blanc yes. Um it, it is interesting when... So, Lost Springboard is one of the commenters here. Look at this. <laughs> oh, there um, you go. So, this is what happens. When he does the shows, people like Lost Springboard will um, chime in with exactly this. So, I don't know if you want to actually... I don't know if you want to read that off or what. I, I guess I'd better before I comment on this further, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because this is what happens is that, first of all, uh, Periscope is a fantastic resource. Yeah. His shows that he's done with um, Young Brando are good. He is not, from my experience, a lot of people don't like him because he does these deep dives. And then a lot of people don't like him because they don't feel that he is nuanced enough uh, and that he, he, he defends Rolex pretty ruthlessly no matter what. I like the guy. Yeah, I, I've I'm enjoyed a lot of his commentary, him. but um, I, now, now I understand, and I will do some further research. And Artie Langenzone is saying uh, that uh, they uh, they want to pretend that he doesn't exist, basically, because he exposes them. Yeah, I mean, he does seem to really be a thorn on the side of a lot of these auction sites. Every time there's a big auction, um, he, he makes compelling arguments on why uh, one should be very concerned and do some further research on some of these. And I'm sure just doing yeah. this, like, you got to be wrong once in a while, too, right? Like. Yeah, he, 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 he takes a lot of risks, so he'll be wrong on occasion, I'm sure. But the auction sites, if anybody watches Young Brando's channel over time, Young Brando covers the auctions heavily. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I mean, that's the main connection to Peresco. Got um, it. <clears throat> so, but yeah, the, the, he's, a, he's a good guy as far as I'm concerned. Peresco's a good guy. Young Brando's also, obviously also a good guy as far as I'm concerned. But I don't particularly agree with his Blancpain assessment. And I'm actually kind of funny for us to see Lost Spring Bar, who's a Hanabasara mm -hmm. brother. Uh, as the commenter who puts exactly the debunk in it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But I linked yeah, Presco's IG. If anybody wants to see what, what Hoff is talking about, I linked it in the, uh, the chat. Right. So now we can segue into what do we think about this Blanc Pawn. I will, I guess, add this one here. Um, I don't know. If there's better pictures, let me take a look here. So, you know, it's again bio ceramic, the same as the speedy. But I was um I know someone do you I don't know if you guys remember somebody on one of the previous shows had mentioned the five oceans and they were correct because that is what they wound mm -hmm. up doing. Um I'm glad they did it. No radiations. I can't I'm actually super excited. Yeah, I think no it was Cap who did the five oceans. I think it was Cap who brought that up. It might no. have been Cap, right? That is, uh, I almost forgot about Cap. That oh, it was you, Butcher. No, that's right. It was Jeremy. Yeah, it wasn't Cap. Cap, you're out. Sorry, Jeremy, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to replace the talent around here, you know. JJ, <laughs> yes, I'm gonna head off, buddy. I've been streaming since like seven this morning, so I gotta get some rest. All right, thanks for coming. Congratulations, right, congratulations. Sleep, congratulations again. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Ten thousand. I'm Thank glad you. you got there before certain other people. Yeah. Oh yes, that's right. Tell I know who it. I beat out. Yeah, tell him suck it. Yeah, I know who I beat out. And he was he was uh 
uh, coming at me a long, long time ago about, you know, this and that and bullshit this and whatever. So that's funny that I beat him. <laughs> mm. Take that. Oh, hey. by the way, right now, oh, God, I'll, tell you, I'll say it when you go. Okay. No, go ahead. Tell me. I'm just, uh, I am winning by 0. .02. <laughs> and this is the last game. This is all that matters. I have Tony Pollard. He has Dak Prescott, Barkley, and Dallas defense. So if Pollard scores a touchdown here, and then the Giants come back and score a touchdown, you win. I win. Yep. Maybe the Chiefs will win Pollard. on Thursday night, too. No, yeah, they, they got win. smashed. JJ, boys. I'll and and didn't the Whiskey Reaper bet a grand on that game? Take care, bro. Hey, yeah, uh, did. somebody needs to jump on the panel to even out for JJ here. So someone get on here. Yeah, let's oh, go. Yes. Somebody. All right, boys. I'll see you. Later, Brian. Come on, Marco, on. If you're free, I see you lurking in the chats. Marco's being a little biatch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I dropped the link. Uh, so now they did. I don't like the Indian Ocean one, but I, I have a feeling Jeremy's going to like that one. The green, uh, you know, I haven't seen any of these. I've been at the racetrack for three days. I was at the mm -hmm. Chiefs game before. I, I literally, uh, I think I had 600 messages and stuff. I didn't look at nothing. Okay, well, we'll I hated through. all these colors when they first came out, besides the blue, and then the white grew on me. And slowly, a lot of these colors kind of have grown on me. I hate to say. Now, what this is just, I, I didn't even notice this one at first, but I kind of like this one. What is so, this? all these guys sell like 42 and 43 millimeter watches now. Is that what I'm hearing? I've no. always liked 42 and 43 no, millimeter you watches. Because you're adult sized. <laughs> He's making fun of me. <laughs> making fun of me. Well, why can't I make this bigger? I fucking hate these releases. They're going to make bank. I fucking hate it because of what it means Swatch is doing. Swatch needs to sell. You know what? You, you, I thought about this. Fuck, I was in the shower. I was thinking about this. It annoys me so much. <laughs> the fact that we didn't work enough. harder on the moon swatch is exactly how little we actually care about Omega. The fact that we didn't tell Swatch, like, please don't do this again, is how <laughs> little people care about Omega. Is that we would let Swatch do this to these brands. And they're doing it to Blancpain, and they're going to, what? So fucking sell Blancpain. Fucking spin Omega off, sell Brigade, sell Harry Winston, sell your luxury brands, and just admit you have no goddamn interest in luxury anymore. Do not dilute these brands anymore. You fuck with clowns. I don't think they're looking at it as diluting it, though. I think you're looking at it very differently than they are. I think they're looking at it as free advertising. By, by uh, Ali, I, I can't tell you. I work with a lot of you kids in their young 20s, and I cannot tell you how many of them, like, the moon swatch game is something that kind of got them into watches or carrying my, watch. Toyota Mo, Uncle Mo got my daughter one. But the thing is that the doing it once with a moon swatch moniker can work. It obviously did. Even I said, like, well, it's great. It worked. But there's an entry point to Omega at retail with Quartz Omega Seamasters that are $2,400, $2,500. There's nothing remotely close to that with Blanc Pond. You can't say my four hundred dollars system fifty one track is going to suddenly be a gateway to a fifteen thousand to thirty thousand dollar blanc pond. Certainly not a no rad, right? No, it's not the same. It's not the same comparison. And it, I, and if imagine if Hoff, imagine for a second if Fisher Price came out with Fisher Price my first Louis Vuitton or Fisher Price Gucci, like we if it was about a brand we cared about Fisher Price Rolex, we would be pissed. The problem is we don't care about these brands. Swatch to me, I, I think this is Swatch <laughs> oh. making a hail mary, trying to get them relevant. Like I think, yeah, that's generation. what it's advertising. Perfectly. I don't. Know, I think. It, I think. But, but to be well, honest, a lot of a lot I, of colleagues. I, I see what they're doing, and it makes sense. Look at what they're doing, right? They started with a two hundred, whatever. Let's say three hundred dollar piece, right? A very iconic watch, Speedmaster, right? Caused the craze. Now. They're giving you a little more kick in the right direction, right? Here's a System 51. Now it's no longer quartz, right? Now it's a you know automatic a manual, movement. right? Is it a manual wine? No, I believe automatic. it's manual. I don't even know. What no, it's automatic. It is automatic, oh. right? Yeah. Um. So now you're getting an automatic movement. Now the price comes up a little bit. Four hundred. They're starting. They're steering you where they want to bring you, right? And it's also bringing you 
um, brand awareness. And it's also going to younger people, like almost like a practice watch. People will be buying this for their sons and daughters. I don't know. I think this is a brilliant move. Um, I see Marco saying it's a plastic watch with an unserviceable movement for 400, but I think it is replaceable. Yeah, Cap. Oh, look, we have Cap in the chat. He says oh, okay. it's replaceable movement and can be swapped out. So I don't know. I think. Uh, oh, I'm I think sorry. Man. The right last thing I want to say on that because I, I've. <laughs> like, I'm just, the, the thing is, Kent Daigle and other folks are like, it's brilliant. It brings, sure, it brings the brand to people's. It brings the brand to people's names, but it's the no different than when Gucci and LV and everything become counterfeits on the street. You can bring the brand more brand recognition and there can be more counterfeits and stuff. But if you want to actually sell the watches, you actually have to have a real product that's accessible. They don't have, they have what, two, two native boutiques, very few ADs in the United States. I don't have an AD anywhere close to me. I live in two of the largest markets in Florida. I can't find a Blanc Pong. And then certainly like if I want one, it's 15 grand to get one that resembles one of these. There's like, so it's, there, there isn't the same exit strategy for bringing brand awareness here as there was for the Moon's Watch. It's, and so they're going to sell, sell like hotcakes. Of course, they're going to sell, but I don't think it's a good long term thing. And I think it means swatches going, well, we don't really care about luxury. Because if they cared, JJ, if they cared for the watch aficionados that like the NORAD, like you, they would have made NORADs more accessible in more sizes over the years than they have. They don't actually care. No, yeah, I don't, I don't think they care yeah. at all. I think they're they're looking to make money. Um, but and, and it's also it's marketing. Well. Like you're co-opting, you're marketing two brands for every dollar spent here too. Yeah. I, I don't I think, think they're gonna do as well as this TV it, anyway. So. Though you could see these all over eBay already. Like nobody's keeping these; they're just buying them to flip them. So I don't think this is, experiment is going to last super long. I just want to get this chat here. New York Strikes Back says trade a Pepsi, a Brigade for fifty four eighty. And a few tutors for a white gold Pepsi. Uh, no, I would say no. Don't do that. Because oh. the the white gold Pepsi is trading under retail right now, isn't it? Pretty significant. Well, yeah, they're definitely trading uh, under it's retail, like thirty five like, grand or something. Uh, I don't know if he's talking about the black dial, blue dial. I mean, unless he's talking about meteorite dial, but well, he would have said that. he would have said right, right. And I'm, I was just um, saying, I was just thinking that is. I'm assuming he's talking about the black dial. Um. I'd assume blue. The black's a lot more scarcer. Well, that's the least expensive one to buy, I think. The Is black. it? Yeah. Um, because you can't differentiate it, so nobody really wants it. But I think... It's just... not available anymore, is it? And then they discontinue No, it I thought it was like a one-year run they did. Mm, but I've been all off that. tonight. But the, just the Breguet, right here, you're looking at 10 grand, right? So... You're basically giving away the few tutors. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't say like few tutors is nothing, right? Um, you, you're basically throwing in the few tutors to do the trade. So I probably, I would probably keep the Pepsi and just sell the other stuff if you don't want it anymore. Just my opinion. Anyone else want to jump in on that? Well, what's the Pepsi going for? Like 17, 16, 17? A little more than that, I think. 18, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're probably eighteen, nineteen, depending if it's a jubilee or oyster. Yeah, and the brigade's what ten? Yeah, about. That's twenty eight. I mean, a couple of tutors is probably six, right? Seven, maybe. Yeah, and I'd say the white gold Pepsi's are probably what at thirty three, thirty six. Yeah, I mean, really it, I mean. As far as the math goes, the math doesn't. It's not terrible, in my opinion. If you if you like the <laughs> if you like the white gold, yeah, I just I personally <laughs> wouldn't do it. I'd rather have a steel Pepsi. Just sell the rest if you don't want it. You know. Yeah, I will tell you. Uh, one of the one of my buddies that I race with, um, he was wearing his white gold uh, uh, blue dial Pepsi all weekend in the race car. It was a fantastic piece. In person, being worn, it was. It made it me go. I, yeah, I really like that. So. I actually tried one on recently, and oh. Hoff got his watch. Oh, yeah, I tried that watch on. It's nice. It's nice. I, I'm not particularly crazy about the flat blue dial. I mean, if I go Pepsi, I want meteorite, but that's just. I, I, I get it. But you know, you're talking about a twenty thousand dollar premium minimum for that. Meteorite. 
for that yep. meteorite dial. Right. So is that worth it to you? <laughs> I mean, I get why Christian bought the black dial, you know, from Theo and Harris. I, I get it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that I think that's the one that kind of put the black dial in my uh favorite box. Yeah, I mean, but I think he paid like thirty grand for that. Yeah, so, I'm sure he did. You know, it's worth a ten thousand premium just to get it in white gold. I think, and a much more rare watch than steel. You know, oh, we got some super chats coming in hot and heavy here. I will get back to the Blanc Pond things. I just want to show them what they are, whether we like them or not. I just want to show what the five watches are. Oh, I didn't get they to are do that. twisting the knife. <laughs> and roll with the five dollar super chat. Just got home. You know, you are getting old when you have a few drinks in the afternoon and need to take a nap. Hop, what the f happened to the G men? I literally was supposed to go over a friend's house to watch the game, and someone called me. He threw everyone out by halftime. <laughs> I'm losing by less than two points. All I need is them to score once, just once, and I win, just so you know. And we have a super chat from Brian. Let's talk live podcast, $20 super chat. Thank you. He says, JJ, Ali, Marco, Cappy, Ari, Mr. GMT, Basil's Bezels, Quicker, and Co., Thank you for the help during the early days of the LTL podcast. If it wasn't for your contributions, it wouldn't be what it is today. I am humbled and never forgot. Thank you very much, Brian. Very class uh, thing to say. We do appreciate that and glad to see you having uh, lots of success. Congrats on reaching 10,000 subs. That is no small feat. So congrats, buddy. His, he's, got a, he's got a good audience. Too. His audience really likes him. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad he found uh, you know the niche that he really liked. It's pretty yeah, cool. Oh, I was... forgot to tell him. I wish you'd stop calling the Long Island serial killer the Seaside Strangler. That was like a Nancy Grace uh, pseudonym that was thrown on very early on into the whole process. And so Hoff is apparently a subscriber. There you go. Yes, I am. I, don't, I, hate to I don't support know. Ryan. Nothing goes better with luxury watches than Birdie Mystery. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, if, if things for Anthony Fair keep going in the direction they are, he'll be. <laughs> yeah, that he'll that'll be, part be the of murder interview mystery that, uh... Oh goodness! Well, we yeah, have... that went dark real quick. <laughs> you better keep hiding out in states that don't have concealed carry. Well, you yeah. know that. Like, so Brian tried to get an interview with Fair, right? And Brian Fair asked Brian for a list of questions, and then the prick went on his own channel and just used Brian's questions as like. The, script the basis his of his, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. so, that was a shitty. So it would be it would be fitting if if Anthony was the victim of of oh, a crime. Oh, instead. Oh, God. <laughs> Ollie, you're really that. getting corrupted. You got to stay out the dungeon. No, fuck, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> I, I feel like six months ago. We would have That's true. No, it's true. Like thing. I, I, I there, there was a point a few weeks ago, and it actually had to do with. Our our former German friend. Well, I just thought to myself, there's like ASMR there's no damn benefit. Watch talk guy. Yeah, there's no benefit to being polite to some people. Oh, right, facts. right. It, it, there, there are limits, but there's no benefit to being polite to some people. And I find, and maybe I'm just getting old, and maybe I've just given up on the idea of, of my soul being saved because fuck, I don't know. But well, you, you also get ornery as you get older, I find. Yeah, he needs to be he needs to be fucked with a rusty chainsaw in the skull. <laughs> like the dude needs to be gone. Well, I'm with you. I, I mean I think he's a lot danger more dangerous than um the kind of you know comedic angle he gets because of all the trolls making memes and stuff like that. Like this guy's like a hardcore short memes criminal. and stuff. Right. Yeah. It's like you, you, it's like almost, yeah, like you said, it's almost like a joke because, of like, all like, you know, the short memes and him yeah. running around in diapers and, like, you know. And it, for me, it, the just response he had was like, people don't lose their house over a $20,000 wristwatch. I mean, if I could have fucking reached mm -hmm. through the screen and strangled him at that point, I, I was just. That's why I stayed off that show because I knew I wouldn't be able to. Well, no, how I mean, many how many people were problem. trying to sell that twenty thousand dollar watch so they didn't lose their house? Exactly. That was their, like, that why was their do you last... think people are desperate enough to consign their watches to a guy like you because they need the money? Yep. And the guys with the twenty thousand, you know, the steel Rolexes probably needed a hell of a lot more than the uh, 
you know, guys with the super high end pieces like Wesley and Bob. And, you know, th that doesn't diminish what they're owed or what was done to them by any means. But to see him play it off for a steel stainless steel watch like that was really frustrating. To me. Well, I was at, I'm going to tell this story because it's actually, it, it's related to this. I was at the World Equestrian Center uh, some months ago, right? And I ran into two guys with their two eyes. They were both wearing gold Rado Dio stars. This is, they were gold, but these aren't expensive watches, right? And I said, like, they're really, really nice watches. And one of the guys says, oh, thank you. I just got it back, like, after years. And, he, and I was like, what do you mean? Like, you just got it back. And he told me the story. He's an older gentleman. He told me the story that he had to pawn the same watch when he was younger because he had illegally immigrated to the United States and he was struggling like end to end until he got his papers and stuff like that. We're talking like a four to $800 watch. It was a life changing event for him. Right. So again, fuck fair and his yeah. fucking narcissistic I'm with you. near psychopathy levels of goddamn tendencies. Yep. He'll get what's coming to him. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't yeah. do that much damage to that many people and, you know, not get it paid back. See, like, that was a criticism I took um, when uh, we did that show. It was like, oh, you know, you didn't, like, let him have it or scream at him. It was like, it wasn't that I didn't want to. It, nobody Listen, you're wants, the host of the came. show. You got to keep it going, too. Right, but also nobody, like, there were. don't forget, there were like 1,600, 1,700, whatever it was, people watching, right? 30 some odd thousand views on that. Nobody wanted to see a guy that they don't know <laughs> yelling at him. They wanted to see him and basically confronting Wesley, Wesley and Bob. And Bob. And yeah. Right, they wanted to see I them kind of work, you know, whatever, fight, argue, work it out, whatever. They didn't want me to just say, you're a dick. You should, you should pay people back. Like, right. obviously, you know, that's, you know, how you feel. But, um, yeah, that was like a criticism that I think was kind of stupid. I, like, everyone wanted to see them, you know, have their moment, you know. I think it was funny that Brian got to finally stick it to, to, to him. Yeah, after yeah, he that was his funny. Interview. That was pretty I, fun. I'm glad we can make that happen. Was that, that the was only fun. one that was seeing a lot of murmurs around uh, – Someone's trying to put together an internet watch like boxing match, similar to these YouTubers that are <laughs> uh, doing these arranged boxing matches. And apparently they, there was some grumblings that Nico's trying. There's someone that's a huge watch influencer that's trying to put together a fight with him. And there was some rumblings that it could be Nico, actually, the one who Nico versus it. Anthony. Yeah. yeah, maybe he's pivoting because tracks backed out. Yeah, yeah, he said Jack's back. There. I don't know if he actually did, but uh, by the way, thank you, Big Sal. Appreciate the. I'm sure, he didn't the pass the again. drug test. <laughs> but you know what? He's been going at. Well, he he went at Anthony pretty hard. You know, he was like, "Fuck that guy. I don't want to talk about him no more. Fuck him. He's a piece of shit. Whatever." And uh, that was pretty much it. So maybe he does. Hey, the, at least they're the same height. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> might be, might be a different weight class, but you know. No. All right. Are we still going block block pond here? Yeah, I was just going to roll through them quick. Jeremy said he's trying to join, but he's having trouble. Hopefully, he can figure it out. He has an unboxing Ooh. that he wants to get to, so that, yeah. that will be fun. And, and I want to talk uh, a AP strap uh, day. Oh, all right. If cool. we have some time. Yeah, yeah, we have some time for that. Let me just uh, let me pull this up real quick. We'll go through the five, and then uh, we'll do it. I just want to show what they are so Mo could find the one I want. Just kidding, <laughs> Mo. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Uh, we'll start. All right, so the first one is the Arctic Ocean, which is my favorite, the No Rad. I wish they didn't do the orange, though. I wish they did more true to, you know, spec colors, but I like this one. Then they have the Pacific Ocean, which would be great, great for, for a Steelers, Steelers fan. fan. <laughs> right, I was thinking that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Bruins. Right. And then we have the Atlantic fans. Ocean. Which is another one of my favorites. Now, if you notice, see this one only has the uh, plots as the loom, the loom plots as the indices, and these have the three, six, nine, and twelve. So a little different. Just putting it up there, you know. And the triangle versus circular. Now? Right. Uh, yeah, they have the four thirty dates. Um, then you have the Atlantic, which I like as well. I think I want to get the Atlantic because it has the the numbers. It's different enough, and I want to get the Arctic. Those are my two I think I'm going to go for. The Indian Ocean one I dislike, but it's green and orange, so I know this is one Jeremy might like. Uh, <laughs> no? 
It reminds me of your Blanca watch, your Street Fighter watch. You know, like it does have Blanca vibes. I, I mean, I, I like it well enough, but uh, this is the one I like better. This Antarctic Ocean. Yeah, this one overall. If I was just going to get one, I would probably get this. This is really cool. I like yeah. this one. And I think that is all of them. That's the back. That's the uh, that uh, half scuba uh, circular thing in the bottom. That was in the original watches to test for the humidity. Was that it? If, if the watch turned full gray, you were fighting. Me. I am not uh, not sure on that, but maybe someone in the chat. Oh, Ali is saying if we get to 130 upvotes, wow, we got that many upvotes already. I'll drop another. Yeah, it was over 100 when I looked. Damn. <laughs> Everyone says no to JJ. Actually, <laughs> I, Mo, uh, yeah, obviously, I know you got to get yours. So, <laughs> um, but I'm. I don't know. What colors I'm, is Mo going for? Do we know yet? Uh, I don't know which one. I haven't. I haven't asked them yet. If I was only going to get one, I would get this Antar Antarctic. But if I was going to get two, yeah. I'd get that. Maybe I'll just go with Antarctic. Screw the no red. No red's a little too too noisy. See, I see. I, well. It's good fall uh, color if you have earth tones. I gotta ask though, which one can you put a, a different strap on so you don't have the NATO? Oh, well, any all of them. All of them. Yeah, of them. I, yeah tell them, tell them, Robert. Yeah, they have drilled <laughs> lugs, so it's very easy to change the strap. <laughs> I mean, but but why would you? There's so many great options. <laughs> there is, they're 400 each, so I really don't want to get two because I don't want to tie up $800 yeah. in Blanc Pond. <sighs> I don't know. And I you'll mean, really you know, piss Ali off then. You don't want to... No, see, this is the fucking problem. You just said you don't want to tie $800 up in Blanc Blanc. Then who the fuck is going to tie up $15,000 in a brand that you neglected? I don't God know. Not me. It. Definitely not me. <laughs> I don't care what they come up. That's oh, why I want Kent, Kent Daigle confirmed that is a saturation tab. Yeah. Thank Actually, you. I think maybe I'll just go for this Antarctic and just get one. Cool. How about it, we do it's this? It's definitely the most you... flexible. Yeah, oh, I, I'll man. buy the I'll buy the no red, and you buy one of the other ones. And when you're tired of it, we'll flip. We'll just ship ship to each other. Cool. That way, nobody has much money tied up in blankiness. Yeah, man. All right, enough. Of you this. know, it's so funny. I for some reason thought it was mechanical, and I was actually going to get <laughs> one just to have a first mechanical watch because I've never owned a mechanical watch. And I'm just curious, like, would the mechanical piece annoy me? And I thought it could be a good test for that. But no, actually, uh, manual wine watches are fantastic. I have an old, 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 old 1950 style Elgin. Mm -hmm. It was very similar oh. to my dad's main watch. And they're great. And the great yeah, thing about I'm... it is you have a date. So all you have to do is wind it and set it and forget yep. it. That's exactly uh, what I want in no date mechanical, just to have in the collection and play with. Yeah, I mean, if that's all you want. Pretty good. Yeah, or look for something on eBay that's that's old and cheap, but in, still in really good condition, just to play with it. Yeah, good call. Maybe a Blanc Pong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not cheap even no. when they're old. <laughs> I hey, wish. JJ, can I, uh, can I do a quick plug. You could do whatever you like. Yes. As JJ mentioned earlier, at 5,000 members, we're going to be giving away a Seiko Safety Ocean Limited Edition. Beautiful watch. Beautiful, beautiful watch. Uh, retail price is like $2,500, $2,800. The, we'll announce it ahead of time. The only thing you need to do is be at that episode, and we're going to populate everybody in the chat and do a random drawing. However, some of you may remember we have the 3 and the G, and we gave away a limited edition 3-watch Hodinkee Globetrotter case. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get ready to do the six watch case, which is the Ooh. final three in the G. Um, so this is sold out, made by Globetrotter. It is very similar, but not identical to their six watch cases. This one actually has an additional tool tray. You can see down here where it's populated with six watches, some tools. These are beautiful cases. It is brand new in box. You Somebody won the three piece ball. already? Yeah, the three piece Kelly's husband, Pete, won it. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Congrats! Right. This. So, I this. this has been this has been a bit of time. Um, no. uh, I haven't seen them unbox it or anything like that, so I don't know. Right, but so either the three pieces was already given. This is the last of the three in the G. To enter three in the G, uh, you need to, unfortunately or fortunately, you need to have a 
um, Instagram account and you need to post three of your watches with a G-Shock. The idea is three uh, uh, watches of any sort. They don't have to be automatic or whatnot, but three in a G with the G-Shock. You can see some of the other entries here, like JJ's entry, his three yeah. in a G. Um, I'm going to win, see, by the way. You can see entries. This was Pete's entry, right? That uh, the one, it was three, and he had a bunch of G-Shocks and garbage is his joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think this was... I forget it. That wasn't Jeremy's, was it? No, that wasn't Jeremy Butcher's. That wasn't mm-hmm. Jeremy Butcher's. But uh, a lot of people, you know, had entered this. So you post on Instagram, you tag me in it, and you hashtag 3 in a G, and preferably use both hashtags, the one with the new number 3 and the one with the word 3 spelled out. So 3 in a G, 3 in a G. You can see the hashtags on the bottom of my profile. And then... Uh, I did change my username to Ape Lux because everybody kept calling me a monkey. So um, tag me and then put the hashtag 3 g 3 g Once we get another 15 entries, we'll run this giveaway. Everybody except Pete, who won the first one, is in this as well. So if you enter, you have your original entry. If you re-enter, you will get a second entry. So if you entered in the first one, you'll get a second entry. So you can double your odds. So cool. just use the hashtags 3 and 3 and Blondie please tag me once. When I first long. seen this in my thread, uh, your new handle, I thought it was like a weed brand, Ape Lungs. That <laughs> 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 so was a new uh, cannabis strain. So just now a it quick, was... quick update. I'm losing by two and a half points. These giants are not going to score one. No, point. Yeah, I'm not looking no. again. No. La- last you made me look, it was forty to nothing. That's all I can take, and I can't take no more. Yeah, it's still forty to nothing. <laughs> um, we have a super chat here. What's this? Boxing Malacca's kids gym, two dollars. My nose is flat, but not as flat as my brother's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. So Thank you're you. a better boxer than your brother is what you're saying? I guess that's why he is a boxing Malacca. Yeah. There you go. Okay. It's Let's still 40 take, take it easy on Thanks. the Malacca st- <laughs> uh, slander. My nose is flat <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Who do we got here? Jeremy. Jeremy, just wave to me so I know you're a real person. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, Jeremy. Jeremy. Welcome to the hey, panel. What's up? Wait, how are you? What's up, Jeremy? Welcome to the panel. Well, well Jeremy, your yeah. YouTube window is open. Just, uh, just close your YouTube window because it's echoing. YouTube window is open. Okay. Uh, just close your YouTube window. Cause... I'll mute you for a second. Give Jeremy. Some... All right. Good. There you yep. go. Perfect. Yeah, when Perfect. you have that open, it's like a little delay. It echoes. So. Got it. So. Jeremy, tell us what's the deal. You got a new watch? Tell, tell talk to well, us about I'm it. A, I'm a rookie in the uh, the watch game. One of my best friends, he's a he's a big watch collector, and uh, every time I go over there, he's like, "It's about time you get a watch." You've been working a long time. I just turned 46 in September, mm-hmm. so I was like, "Man, for for like the last year, I've been going down the rabbit hole, looking at watches, trying to find the watch I want." So he was like, better get you a Rolex. Yeah, I like Rolexes, but I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, walk around with these high price things you put on your wrist, trying to get banged up. I'm worried about getting banged up. So Mm -hmm. I work offshore. So I was like, all right, Uh, I found a watch I like. So I was like, at the time, he was like, you got to go to Rolex. You got to put your name on the list. It's going to take a year, two years. I was like, what? (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, surprise. All right. So I just, I, I went to the one of the Rolex dealers here in Houston and uh, there's like six of them. I just picked the one. I was like, I put my name on there. I told them which watch I want, two, two different watches I wanted. And so right. about three months later, I get this phone uh, email or message on my phone. Hey, uh, we got your watch. Can you come in? I'm like, I'm offshore, middle of nowhere. <laughs> of course I, they're like how am i supposed to wire i couldn't wire the money at the time because i had no service so i'm like i'll just you know skip it put it on the next person 
And then uh, a couple days ago, I'm at home. Here comes a text message. Hey, you, you offshore? And I was like, no, I'm in Houston. <laughs> and she's like, well, you want, want to come down? Come take a look at what we got. So I drove down there two days ago. And uh, let me see. Hang on. I got to get you in position here when you're getting ready. I got to make you a little bigger than us. So this, we could, is, uh, this, this is who I went to in Houston. If you ever looking for stuff. Thomas Markle. All right. There Some you seats in here. Nice. And I thought I, about two days, about last week, I was real close to going on the gray market. I, I searched the Rolex forums. I was trying to like, I'm not trying to pay higher than what I need to pay. Right. Right. They're expensive enough in my yeah. book. I, I found out, like different uh, gray market dealers around Houston. 2023 unworn, full everything. I got anywhere from 22k. The lowest I got was like 19k. I was like, let me check the forums. I found someone on the forums. And they gave me 17.5, and I was like, and I was like, man, that's still higher than like what the Rolex deal was gonna offer me. And so I was like, I better wait. I think they're gonna call me soon. And sure enough, boom, here comes my phone. Oh, nice. That's one of the best feelings, right? When you get the call. Yeah, I was like, yeah. man, that's as I waited. So here we go. So we got the first it Rolex comes, box. It, first, it comes in. It came into this protected box here. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep it in this thing. Rolex, Rolex. Boom. You got the steel then, box, the steel size. Nice. Come open. Oh, what oh. Do we got what do we got? We got a blues. Oh, bluesy. Oh, nice. very nice. Nice. Congratulations. Congrats on a beautiful watch. Bluesy. Very, very nice. Man. I still have the uh, plastic protector, bezel protector on it. I always hoard those from the AD as well. <laughs> Me too. I love those. <laughs> I keep them right on top of the pillow, uh, right on top of the yeah. uh, whatever that thing is. Uh, I always say pillow, but it's not actually a pillow. Congratulations, Jeremy. That's yeah, awesome. Man. Great piece. And then I've got the one link. Made sure I get my links. Make sure I got my tags. Yep. All my tags. You got your white tag. Perfect. White tag. <laughs> we got. Let's see what else is in this little box? A little secret compartment. It's got a little. Yeah, that's where I keep all yep, my secrets. Emmanuel. Oh, don't show the cereal. Yeah, yeah watch the cereal number there. Hey, y'all don't be watching my cereal. <laughs> <laughs> this the booklet, cereal. Let me see what the date is. Yeah, here we go. Nice. 9 2023 Fresh off the lot. For, I got it for, before sales tax, 16 uh, 5 16 oh, nice. Sale tax, uh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Fifteen six, then sell tax came out sixteen eight eighty seven. There you Beautiful. go, and it's in your name. In my, most... in my name. Yep. Unworn, you started your journey. Yep. Unworn, no scratches, no tricks from the eighties. Switching out fake boxes. And a good That's thing. Is so how long have you been? Yeah. How long have you been watching JJ's? Uh, I just it started popping up in my YouTube uh, suggestions. Like oh, maybe right. about two or three months ago, so I it just has begun. Started watching. It. Do you know who Wes is by chance? Wes, which one? For the from Timepiece Gentleman episode, Wes. Yeah. Yeah, we the chat has has named you the time traveling Wes, so I changed your name. <laughs> of course. The, time traveling Wes. the younger Wes. Yeah, the younger Wes. <laughs> the younger Wes. <laughs> yeah, I was. I, yeah, I'm lucky I didn't go to the timepiece gentleman because that's one of the ones like popped up on the YouTube. I was like, I'm sure Man. being in town, like I know Houston's not close to Dallas, but same state still. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, it Man, it could be tempting. And I, I'd always go to his website, you know, check out all the different watches, all the all the YouTube dealers I would go to. But I just I don't know. So I needed to come from the the Rolex dealer itself. I wanted to make sure that like, everything was perfect. And plus, you picked up a two tone from them, so now you're in perfect position to ask for a GMT yeah. and steel. Yeah. Say, and this is what you're telling me, ready, Jeremy? See, this is why we get paid the big bucks. You tell them, 
you you started your relationship. You say, I love the piece, you know, whatever. I don't know what your intentions are, but I would do this either way. Enjoy it for a while. Go back in wearing it one day, you know, in a couple months or whatever. Say, I love the watch. It's great. My favorite daily piece. When I travel, though. When I'm offshore. Much, right. When I travel, it's just a little loud with the gold. I want something that I could travel with because I do go offshore, as you know, because yeah. you did call me when I was offshore. Um, I would love to have a travel piece like a GMT, but I would want it in steel so it's not as flashy as the gold. And hopefully they'll call you for your second. And that. And what are we gonna? One. How do we? I like that meteorite meteorite dial uh, GMT. The steel. Pepsi. We want to go steel. Oh, steel. Yeah. That's steel not. Uh, that story doesn't steel. work when you ask for the meteorite. Dial. Make, make, make no. yourself make yourself about six <laughs> seven thousand. Well, my 000. second choice was make yourself about the, six uh, seven thousand profit. Just order the steel. No, I got it. What, my what, second what, choice what was the uh, the Panda, Daytona Panda, but they said that list is yeah. forever. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You got a couple more ahead of you before either one of those two are coming through, or you really, really are lucky. Yeah, you got to spend probably six digits that year to get that, you know, six figures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they were trying to upsell me when I was in there. They're like, you need some diamonds? Do you need this? This? Can you buy? I'm like, nope, I came yep. here for my watch. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you buy a car and they throw you in the finance offices and yeah. they're trying to put on the ceramic coating. The so what? What do y'all think about uh, watch winders? Like, should I be putting it on a watch winder? So I don't want to be wearing it all the time. I'm scared I'm gonna scratch it. it it's just a simple, you know, date and time. I I wouldn't. Right. It's it, easy it, to set. You, you don't want to yeah. put all that extra wear and tear. You wouldn't for no keep reason. your car running in the garage, would you? <laughs> yeah, just because yeah. you don't feel like starting it when you drive yeah. it, you know? It's, it, you literally, it'll take you like five, five, not even five minutes to set it. You just no, set it, it'll, it'll take you, you literally a minute and a half max. Right. right. Yeah, there are basically or, three exceptions to watch winder. I mean, some people will just want them always ready and they like to watch winders in this mm, way. Right. But the three exceptions are annual calendars, perpetual calendars, and yeah. moon phases. Those are basically the three yeah. exceptions because setting those becomes a little more complex. Now, that's companies like Longo on their perpetual calendars have made them amazingly easy to set. So it might not even count for those either. Mm. Right. But for the most part, watch winders are, you know, um, not a regular, you don't want the regular wear and tear. Although, to be fair, like the watch you have, it could take wear and tear. You've yeah. got the one that is offshore qualified. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like as much as I don't, I'm not a huge Rolex fan, but Rolex is the, the freaking the Toyota, the Lexus, the beast. Like those yeah. engines, they're V8s. They'll run forever. Yeah. Yep. Those movements are bulletproof. Got it, got it. Here's, yeah, here's I one. Like, I was like, man, should I get a watch? I talked to my buddies like, I got six watch winders if you want one. But I was like, so what if I, I go I go offshore for like a month at a time? So that means when I come back, I have to like redo the watch, set the time, and all that, right? Yeah, but it's not yeah. a big deal. Okay, okay. Yeah. Once you get the hang of it, trust me, it's not, you'll enjoy the process. To it's me, I first, actually enjoy the process. Yeah. It's your first automatic watch. Yeah, this is what I wear. This is embarrassing for y'all, I'm sure. This is my normal. The, the one thing to keep in mind, Jeremy, okay, where so. everyone always freaks out with me when it's their first like automatic or Rolex and they get it, I always get these calls that like it's not starting. I can't get it to tick. You, you got to wind it 20 times mm. to turn. Once you take the crown out, wind it about 20 turns before you set a time or go to use it because that's what will get the movement going again. It's not like. You know, you might have had like ch cheaper watch where you just shake it a second and then it starts ticking. With Rolex, you definitely want to wind the crown of a bunch. I, I usually do yeah. around 15 to 20. Yeah, they you do for, first of all, about 20 times, they said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, first of all, congratulations again because now the Rolex will reduce your therapy bills for being an out watch wear. <laughs> right. Yeah. It will definitely need less therapy. Right. Uh, your testosterone levels will start to climb back up. Um, you got to grow new hair. To, to uh, the one thing that, and I, because my daughter just, and she just went through this a few years ago, is you don't want to set the date when the time oh. is within like two to four hours of midnight. So you want to make sure that you rotate the time to like between five and seven a.m. or five and seven p.m. before you start flipping the date. That's okay. it. If you do that, um, 
everything else will be fine. You just give it a bit of a wine, set the time and date, you'll get used to it, you'll screw the crown back in. It's a nice cathartic little thing. Uh, you'll enjoy it. You will find yourself enjoying it. But no. it's not setting the date when it's close to midnight, when the date's cutting over within a few hours. That's the only thing to remember. You'll be good. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I always I mean, align my minute and uh, hour hand to like 6.30 or somewhere down there so you never have to like do any math and worry about like a danger zone. Just have them all pointed to the 6 and you mm. can set the date anytime you want. I want to thank America228-236 for it. Three dollar uh, super sticker, greatly appreciate. Mark. it. Give you a thumbs up. He likes your uh, new purchase, and he's got his platinum uh, day date in the Abbey. I see. Yeah, America's got that is a very nice platinum day. Speaking of platinum day dates, uh, with, with fluted bezel. Right. Yeah, that's the way to do it if you're going to do it. Flute me up. Um, I was just going to say, I think, but I think Ali's getting the white gold, right? I think no, I got platinum. Got a five. Oh, I it? made a request for platinum day date and. Uh, yeah, might see an unboxing here. Oh, there we go. There we Very go. Nice. Wow. Now, That's just a... to be clear, it's still a placeholder. Like, I don't know if a rollie is going to be part of the permanent three MDG, mm. but just get it with the uh, the ice blue motif dial and the fluted bezel. And then when you're sick of it, you send it on this way. I like it. <laughs> That's a reason. No diamonds for me. Thanks. So, yeah. <laughs> Right. This is oh, did, no, no, Jeremy's not frozen. So this is your first. It starts. A, it starts a journey. All right. It starts an addiction. Okay. Yeah. So do you already in your head? Have you already thought about what the next one's going to be? You said meteorite dial, but that that's a little bit unobtainium, right? Is there an interim, or is it just next balls to the walls meteorite dial? Uh, I mean the panda would be nice. I like that. I like the panda. Yeah. Uh, that you're gonna have to buy in the gray market. You're, you're not gonna yeah. get that one unless, unless you spend the hundred grand in jewelry. Then they'll sell you one. Or get super lucky. Yeah, there is no super lucky. That's nonsense. <laughs> I've never. I, whoever's telling you that you could get lucky is totally lying to you. I'm, well, Diego, I, I mean, was tell, Diego told me he just told his. Diego um, buys watches on yeah. fucking AliExpress. But go ahead. What were you gonna say? <laughs> what, did, what, did, what did he say? <laughs> well, he does. No, he he told me. Uh, his AD was like, oh, you were, I thought you'd be one of the first people that reached out about new Daytonas to me because he's previously been talking about it to the AD and told them, no, he's actually super depressed and uh, was scared they're going to make him bigger and all that. And apparently mm -hmm. said they called him in a few hours and uh, had one ready for him. Of the old oh. stuff. Well, I'm going to tell you a good story about Diego after the super chat. We have Sam Davidson with two pounds. He says, "Great sub, man. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate." I I, I I choose to believe stories like this just because I like the potential. Yeah, the, this the same way he said uh, he walked into Patek Philippe and they sold him an Aquanaut uh, 50, uh, 167, uh, 5164 uh, travel time. But the travel time? Why yeah. that didn't happen? You think that was the first watch he walked in and got that at retail, and then he walked in and got a panda? I mean, come on, what is he the luckiest, or is he blowing everybody yeah. in the back room? What uh -huh. is he doing? Um, uh, you know what that little prick did, Diego? You little prick, I've always been nice to you. When I got Buckley on the show, you know, this little scumbag reached out to fucking Buckley to try to get him on Tim's show the day before. He tried to cock block me, this little weasel Diego with his fucking drawn on pencil mustache. What a weasel move. Why? Because he's a little dickhead, a jealous little dickhead who wants to blow Tim for attention. I didn't say anything It was for confirmed a while. it was him who was yeah, the one reaching yeah. out? Buckley told me himself it was Diego. He said, wow. who's this guy Diego? He messaged me to come on Tim's show the next day. This little fucking weasel tried to, to, to steal my lead. That's why he went on the day after. Oh... Roger that. Because he said, fine, you want you want me on? I'll come on, but I'm coming on the day after the interview, not the day before. So just wanted to put that out there. Diego, I know what you did, you little rat scumbag. Somebody, somebody sorry, that. Jeremy. I didn't yes, mean to sir. take somebody, you off topic. Can't, can't, can't. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on your watch. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Lord. It was the guest in a location. Someone was asking the chat which location. Uh, huh. Yeah, Gessner. I mean, yeah, yeah, on Gessner off of I ten. Also, I went that same morning. Uh, I went to the Swatch in the mall to my buddy. Uh -huh. He's like, I, I, "If you can get it for me, 
get it. So, I'll, uh, so uh, I was I'll like, <laughs> I was like at, I just went like at, in the, at nine when the mall opens. So I was thinking, not nah, maybe a hundred people might be there. Man, I get there. That they said people were there at two in the morning. Really? All the outside, all the way to the parking lot in the gallery mall. Like the line was ridiculous to get that those watches. That's how many backpack uh, watch dealers there are in Houston. <laughs> Man, it was. I was like, I'm not standing this line. Oh, <laughs> look, look who, look who just woke up. <laughs> Good morning, uh, Roman. How are you? Hey. I, I, I was about, I was about to go to bed, and I see you on the live. I just got to Miami for the show, and I'm like, hold on, JJ is up. Hold on, I gotta put my monocles on because I can't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we what are we talking about, boys? <laughs> we, well, we were talking about the um, the moon swatch thing. Then we were uh, not the moon swatch, the Blanc Pond one that they came out with. Then we were talking about um, how uh, the the guy Diego is a little prick, and he tried to get Buckley on the stream before uh, before me. Um, what else were we talking about? We we're talking well, about Jeremy just unboxed his first uh, Rolex. Yeah. A beautiful Jeremy Samaritan. just unboxed his first bluesy. Yeah. Nice. We got Mar Marco in the chat giving us some stories. We were here. talking about Gary almost killing Marco earlier, actually. Oh, that was fucking funny. Was I, so, <laughs> so, guys, just so you know, right? So, Gary, 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 oh shit, hold on. Gary likes to, Gary likes to, <laughs> no like, dick pics, please, no dick pics. We don't want to get you. Yeah. <laughs> he likes to play rough. And, uh, but like, he likes to play around. Like, it's, it's, it's part of the culture, right? right. So, they're hanging out in, uh, I guess my bookkeeper's office. And every day Gary comes up to him with a stick Russian accent. Marco, what you sell today? And then he'll like grip him up a little bit. So uh, he said, I sold whatever, 300,000 something. And he's like, oh, that's it? And he just like <laughs> lightly pushed him. Like, you know, like as a, as a play thing. Not realizing that, some, you know, his own strength. And Marco, Marco was already walking out. So I guess the, I don't know, the <laughs> momentum carried him over. He almost hit the, because we have glass doors in all the offices. He almost hit that glass door. No. But it was it was all in good fun. But funny part is, is that Cameron, our, our head videographer, he decides I'm gonna cut it in the way, like for, you know how you when we start the video, we show you the little bits and pieces to get you excited about the yeah. video. Yeah. The first cut, open. he came to me. I said, "Absolutely not," because it literally <laughs> he made it look like he threw him through a window, which is not what really happened, right? <laughs> he just like kind of shoved him a little bit, and I'm like, "No, no," because we will not hear the end of it in the comments. Just let's but just not. Can we get that clip to use here on the show? Because <laughs> ab ab Mar absolutely, I will, I will send that over to you. We'll, we'll do like a boomerang type of thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great. One. <laughs> Ali, do you have the clip I sent you? The last one Roman sent me. Do you know which one I'm talking? About? <laughs> the sleeping one. But, just... but, oh no, he he posted that as well for Nico's birthday. Oh, that was so great. Oh, when Nico was, was sleeping. That. that was the best. So, let me ask you: Is it now protocol in the office for Marco to wear a helmet for insurance purposes? While uh, yeah, <laughs> Marco was wondering if there's like a lawsuit or something. I said you could try, but then you'll really get hurt. <laughs> you just need a need a better chin strap, Marco. Yeah. No, but you know, right. you know what it is. I think he like I don't know. Maybe like he was literally walking. And it's just like I said, it's like the momentum or whatever it might be, and and it was just, yeah, it was very very interesting. Let's just. Say. I love Gary, man. That Me guy too, is man. just Gary hilarious. Too. Like, well, I'm here. I'm here with him in Miami now. He's going to <laughs> IWGG tomorrow, and Cameron says this like every time Gary is around and whatever situation it might be, he just comes up to him and says, "Gary, I just need you to talk. That's all you got to do because something <laughs> always happens. Like he'll say something funny, like." The whole and thing about like easy on the calculator, that shit went viral. We had we had like 10 million views on one of the shorts. It like little when you told the Japanese dealer like easy on the calculator, we made him a t-shirt that says easy on the calculator. <laughs> That's crazy. And then Adrian is like, you know. And then Adrian is like, all right, dad, we're opening up a TikTok account. Meanwhile, Gary learned how to send a text message three months ago. So it's like, you know, it's gonna be a bit tough. But you know the learning curve. Thing. A bit so, of a Jeremy, just so you know, this is Roman Sharf, who is the, yeah. Uh, I, I, okay, so you, you, you've run into Roman on on the webs. Yeah, Jeremy yeah, just yeah. bought his first Rolex at, at retail, and he's fairly congratulations to the watch game. Thank you, thank you. So, I'm actually in this channel. I'm JJ's groupie. I don't know if you know. This. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Roman Sharf. <laughs> why my why favorite part I, of the Why would I see Marco's handsome face? Where is he? <sighs> Marco's making working, deals. Like, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's working. Sleep. He was trying My to sell favorite me part of the Marco thing off. is when he came back in and he was like, I didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we got to get him on a push-up regimen. Adrian's got to get him into the uh, you know push-ups on during lunchtime or something. You know, I think if Adrian, me. I think if Adrian gets a hold of him and starts to train, he'll quit, and I don't want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we just trained, you... I've trained with Adrian. He's he's we go to Dubai one time, and uh, we have a really good friend and a client. Uh, his name is Mustafa, and he's got this heavy Arabic accent. And I remember Adrian was like one of his cutting streaks where like he cut all the fat and he, he you know, it was like, that's how he, that's what he looks like now. Sometimes he carries 20 pounds more on him. So Adrian is all mm -hmm. cut up, six pack, the whole to do veins popping out. Mustafa comes up to him. He's like, Adrian, Yanni, what are you eating? Rucks? <laughs> 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 that kind of stuck. <laughs> like, what are you eating? Rocks? He goes. <laughs> Yeah. So Marco just said that um, he's laying in bed, but we so just told him. Yeah, that's what we said. So what's your what's uh, you know what's, what's your deal? excuse, man? Maybe he doesn't have a shirt on. I'm laying in bed. Well, just I think you, know, you should command him up. to join. Uh, yeah, Mar Marco, join or you're fired. No. <laughs> yeah, nah, I, I can never fire him. Like, or you know, or Gary's like... gonna give you a swirly next time you're in the office. <laughs> this, I think this I think this is the reason Marco didn't come to Miami with us because Gary has a place on the 44th floor. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. a shove from there might be. <laughs> oh, 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 there he is. There he is. There he is. Oh, oh, look who just got out of bed. Go. <laughs> put a shirt on and everything. Hey, man. <laughs> I had to go put a shirt on. <laughs> well, the hair's looking pretty good for bedhead. Yeah, thank yeah, you. He man. definitely combed his hair real quick, right? He's like, oh, of course. You got to go the old, you know. Like... Mark, are you coming to work on Monday? You're allowed? I don't know. That's a good question. Are we going to talk about that? I think the office is empty, though, on Monday. Why? Oh, now you got to talk I'm about actually, it. I'm going to, I, I have to drop off a watch at Tracks NYC, so I might just go to the office quick and then uh, go to New York with Kevin. You don't want to. You don't want to have Michael drop it off. Yeah, whatever. It's another. So show. I'll tell you the story. All right. So what is the? I mean, look, not Maybe not we'll our days. Thing. I'm talking about yeah. folks that are my age, like 45 plus, on this channel. So mm -hmm. when kids used to act up, you know, when we used to act up as kids. I don't know about you guys. I got my ass whooped, right? But now with these new kids, with the what are you? What is it? Marco Millennial? What is he? XGX? Whatever. What's the what, what is it? Gen Z? Maybe? He's a Zoomer. He's, he's got to be Gen Z, right? Right. No, so 1999. That's that's like last of the millennials. Okay, so he's last of the millennials or new of the Z. And you know, with these kids, you know, you have to put them in timeout. You know, you can't do what <laughs> Gary does. So Adrian last week got into argument number six hundred and forty-six with Marco. And he put him in a timeout. He said, you're going home and you're not coming back to the office till Monday. So Marcus has been in the timeout. Now, that doesn't mean Marcus not working or he's fired. Marcus is still working and selling watches from home. But he literally put him in a timeout for a week <laughs> to go home, reflect, and actually relax, which I don't think Marco did because pretty much every night, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, Marco, this is home hold. This is sold. So I don't know if he actually got some rest or had time to reflect on the fact that this kid works 23 hours a day. But yeah, he was in a timeout last week. I think he can come, safely come back, especially with Adrian in Miami. I think it's pretty safe. <laughs> you know what I used to get? You, you ever see, you know, the shoe with the tassel on the front? Uh huh. Yeah, I used to get the, the flying tassel shoe, oh. like when I would come through the door. If I did something, I knew my I was. Mom wore yeah. boomerangs as footwear but as I, well. <laughs> I already knew I was in trouble. So you would come in and, like, you know, you were in the, the beginning of the hallway, and then, like, the living room was to the left, and the staircase to go upstairs was to the right. So, so you'd run as fast as you could to not get the shoe. But my father had this boomerang technique, like Hoff was saying, where it would <laughs> kind of curve up the steps yeah. and, and, and it would catch you. And sometimes I would pretend it got me when it didn't, but he would know because the sound against the wall was different than when it actually hit you off the yeah, head. Off your head. <laughs> my, both were hollow, though. In the trick with that is when your parents threw something at you, and I learned this the hard way, the trick is not to swerve out of the way and actually let it hit you because if they miss, they get even more pissed off. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We my mother used to favor the wooden spoons and the, mm -hmm. it was always fun, fun and games. We'd laugh when she broke them <laughs> over our heads. <laughs> and, and then until they, she started uh, charging us for the replacements. Uh, you know what's funny? Just get them in I the pocket. I remember the time I think I broke my father finally and I didn't get hit anymore as a kid because we would do so much. We, uh, but we, in my defense, we were pretty stupid. You know, we did a lot of like things that normal. Your father had do. lots of practice, but he had a lot of reasons, you know, but one time I had a basketball, 
a basketball hoop. It wasn't like a full size hoop, but it was like a mini one. In like a, like in the bedroom, I had this thing. It used to hang off the closets. <laughs> They think he hit me with the full basketball hoop. <laughs> and I laughed. And he said, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> You're laughing. I think he gave up at that point. Because it was just like, there was there was not enough stuff to hurt me with anymore. Like, I just didn't care. I would just laugh. When I, but it, when I didn't I laugh because it didn't hurt. It fucking hurt. Yeah. But I just couldn't help but laugh. laugh yeah, me too. That's a funny situation. Yeah. Was when bad. I was a kid, I knew I was in trouble because my mom would use my full name. And I don't think even JJ has ever heard mm-hmm. my full name because it's like many parts. Mm-hmm. It's so damn long. I'd be like out the window halfway through it. <laughs> I'd be like down the street. Yeah. Run like hell. Yeah, exactly. Back in my banking days, um, before I left corporate and got into watches, I ran a team of 12 guys. Uh, all 12 of them were Indian, of Indian descent. And one guy's name was SDVG, SDVJS. Um, when I first met him, I'm like, buddy, any vowels in that fucking name? Or like at all? <laughs> He's like, nope. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what's with SVGJS? He's like, that's actually an abbreviation to my full name. She so starts telling him his name on Tuesday. He finishes on Thursday. Come to find out that name has his name, his father's name, his grandfather's name, where they're from. Which apparently directions to the house somewhere in the name, like it's like it's like a whole thing. In certain areas or regions of India, they name you where well, you have your father's, your grandfather's name, and also the region that you're from. Uh, and when he when you said, I I still can't till this day repeat that name, but it was it was literally five long ass names put together. We got a super chat from Bubba Hotep. He says, Roman, how can I super chat luxury bazaar so Gary can give Marco a wedgie? <laughs> See the pro the pro the problem I have with that is I actually really really like Marco and I don't want Gary yeah. to give him a wedgie. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just I mean I get it it'll make for great content probably that short will probably go viral but no. Uh, let's I dropped let's the, the other on the video. I paid ten dollars on the video and I said can we make it a regular event for worth costing a Marco? <laughs> but uh, whatever you do don't give Gary any ideas. Oh, man. I, I think he wonder. should be the new one. Marco quizzes for reference numbers on the show. <laughs> oh, oh, I will tell you. I will tell you a Gary story. We're on the way to Miami. It was actually a boys' fishing trip, so we play a poker game every Tuesday. Twelve guys been playing it now, going on eighteen years. Every Tuesday, it's not a money thing. We pitch in a couple hundred bucks to pay for the food at the restaurant, and somebody will end up winning some money. In the last 18 years, I don't think anybody has ever won or lost money. Just the money kind of keeps circling. And we decided to get a bunch of boys together, come down to Miami, do a little fishing trip, play a little poker, get away from the wives' base and the kids for four or five days. We get to Philadelphia International Airport, and you know I have a big fucking mouth. And you know how Gary is. Mark can attest. You know, you smart off with Gary, he grips you up. Gary was a – he's an ex-wrestler. <laughs> He's an ex wrestler and yeah. he's got a grip that's like he's an iron really grip. Fit. Oh my goodness. He's he is, got, so his hands are like, they're yeah. like pliers. But, and actually, back in high school, he was like number one in the state or something. Just, he was pretty wow. badass. So, long story short, I said something smart to Gary and he just grips me up, like gives me like one of those bear hugs. Next thing I know is I hit, oh. I turned pale white. He ended up breaking one of my ribs by accident. Like literally oh, broke. Oh, he literally he first he was more scared than I was because he saw me turn like completely white. He thought he killed me, I guess, but he didn't. But you know, I was with a broken rib for a couple of months until it fucking healed. And then at a trade show, he shook somebody's hand. This gentleman was a bit older, he was probably in his mid sixties. He shook his hand and accidentally broke his hand. Wow. So, yeah, the uh, lesson there is stay away from. Uh, so don't hope they get the kid check first, and don't, and don't give him any high fives. Yeah. I guess eating rocks run in the family. <laughs> Probably no, but like so wrestlers, professional les- wrestlers, especially those that do like classic wrestling, where it's just upper body, their their grip strength is insane. Yeah, you know, because yeah. they train to have this ridiculous yeah. grip strength, yeah. and sometimes he doesn't know his own strength. I guess. No, he's strong. We're at a where was I? I think it was Adrian's housewarming. Uh, and he was just like toying around, fucking with me, right? And like we just started like wrestling, like we're you know kind of wrestling each other. And this guy almost hip tossed the shit out of me. You didn't, you didn't I mean, do your taekwondo. No, do he almost really fucked my shit. Yeah, he almost messed. You ever show Roman your taekwondo trophy? No, I don't have it here. <laughs> I, st- I still want to see. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see Marco in that uniform. That's oh. I don't even think that uniform fits me anymore. You can't. I'm way too fat for that uniform now. 
<laughs> so we get we got a super chat here from Ken Daigle, five dollars. He says, "Play the Roman scooter video." Oh, yes, sure. please. There oh, you yeah. go. Yeah. Roman. Roman. Did you see that? <laughs> that was the best video. I'll Jeez. give you. I'll give you one more Gary story if you guys want to hear it. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, here for. Him. We're in another. We're in another housewarming party, and you know the Russians. We we tend to be like a herd. We all hang out in a small circle because most of us migrated at the same time and like came up in the same neighborhoods and stuff, right? And uh, we're at a housewarming party, and. At this, at this, at, if, if it's ever a pool party, we'll always play basketball. And Gary is like, all right, who wants to play basketball in the water? Uh, I, I raised my hand right away and I said, okay, I'll be the referee because I know how these games end. <laughs> so it was Gary, another guy, and then two. they were playing against two other guys. Uh, one guy is a professional trainer and a uh, he does the Ironman. You know, those 26-mile yeah. run, 100 yeah. miles bike. And yeah. like, so let's just say the kid's in pretty good shape. He did it nine times. Uh, the other guy is one of those bodybuilder types. He's 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 just like Adrian, except double the size, maybe like two hundred twenty pounds. So no one's gonna get competitive, right? Right. In this game. And then it's Gary and this kid Joe. Now, granted, Joe is also not a little kid, six three, probably two twenty, right? So they start playing uh, basketball, and this guy Mike and the, and the Iron Man guy, they're like, "Come on, old man, what are you doing playing here?" Gary's like, "Whoa, old man, okay, I'll show you." There's, so it's not really basketball. It's more like wrestling in the water, especially <laughs> after a bottle of tequila that can get pretty dangerous. But so later, as Gary and Joe beat the shit out of the other two guys to include the Iron Man guy, the Iron Man guy tells the story. He's like, so we're playing and here I am. And Gary gripped me up and he's holding me under the water. I'm looking up from below at Gary, you know, with a distorted image because I'm underwater. And I'm just wondering to myself, is he actually going to let me go? Or am I going to fucking drown right here and now? <laughs> <laughs> you let him go, then, guys. That's great. You know, the first time I saw him on the show, I said, this guy is my favorite guy. He cracked yeah. me up. Just his, like, just his demeanor in general is, is excellent. I like but you know what the funny part is? is as mean or scary as you may come off, he is the nicest guy you will ever meet in your life. He will do for you if you're friends with him or something. You ask of anything of him, he will do it for you in a heartbeat and without like ever. I can call him at three o'clock in the morning and tell him get in the car and drive to New York. He'll do it. Like mm -hmm. he's the type of personality. His knowledge of high jewelry is insane too. It's one of the parts I really enjoy watching on the show when they're going through and he's teaching all the people about jewelry and just seeing him eye all this stuff and where at the show's kind of negotiating it. Really cool. It's such a difficult genre because there's so much stuff in jewelry yeah. versus watches. Like watches, are, you know, if you do it long enough, like Marco has been a buyer for about a year. And, you know, like I'm comfortable letting Marco make decisions and purchasing things and so on and so forth, right? Because you're really dealing with what was something, I mean, granted, we have access to data, what was something sold for, what was the last time we bought it for and so on and so forth. We know the market more or less. You can go into chats, you can go on Chrono plus minus, 80 <laughs> percent but with that said with jewelry there's just so many different variables that it all almost comes down on feel right like he's been doing it gary's been doing his shit almost 40 years so it just comes down on like he'll take a piece of jewelry and just be like he'll eye and know how many carrots it is and what it's yeah, worth it's amazing to watch and I, I don't know if i have the story right but was he originally like a point ran a pawn broking operation in so, Jersey? so at the age of 20 he had a store in atlantic city uh which was a pawn shop so atlantic yeah, city at the time to be running a pawn yeah, shop. atlantic <laughs> city was in its in its prime and its height it was the place to be anybody who's anybody was there then every single mob that you can name it was down there yep. but and you had 36 licenses that were given out to have a pawn shop that's it it was limited to 36 licenses and these licenses were worth like a half a million and we're going back to like early 80s there was a lot of money and people would pay stupid money just to buy the license because you couldn't open up a pawn brokerage you had to buy the existing license because they limited it to 36. so at the age of 20 gary and a partner they bought that license and he was in atlantic city uh, starting at the age of 20. that's how he got into the jewelry business and then later after that he got into basically wholesale because that's all he ever did is wholesale. And what now almost 11, 12 years ago, well, here's another Gary story. 
I'm at a poker game, our local poker game. This was, we're going back 18 years when I started playing there. They just started the home game. At the time, we were playing from house to house. And uh, I moved into this new house. And this guy, Michael, who was my neighbor, he goes, hey, do you play poker? I'm like, yeah. He's like, listen, we get together with the boys, nothing crazy. Sit down, play a little poker, have a little fun, and so on and so forth. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll come. I'll come on Tuesday. Now, Gary, sometimes he has this look, well, he'll look like this from under his eyebrows. He goes, <laughs> so you on watch business, yes? Yeah, I'm in business, meanwhile, like two years, maybe two and a half. I'm like, yeah. This is your first meeting with him? That's where I met him. That's where I first met him. Okay. I'm like... Yeah, I'm in the watch business. He looks he looks at me, shakes his head, he goes, Okay. Ne follow fast forward to another next Tuesday. We're playing poker. I came again, different guys, because we used to go house to house, different guys' house. I get to the table, he gives me this look again. He goes, Here. And throw literally throws a bag across the table. I open the bag, there's like twenty five or thirty watches in there. And a memo, like, you know, I guess what the watches cost. He's like, Here, you try sell this. I'm like, shit. I get to the office the next day. I open up this bag. It's got 200. And I still have the original memo, by the way. I have it saved. Oh, that's amazing. There's $250,000 worth of stuff in that bag. Because when they used to buy jewelry clothes, out, sometimes they came with watches. Yep. And I'm like, well, shit. At the time, my entire inventory was probably 65000 And this here, this guy <laughs> just meets me, throws $250,000 worth. And this is our business. Like, there's no paper signs. Like, here, sell this. So I'm like, fuck, I got to do everything I can possibly do. I sell all those watches within 30 days. And then I met Alex, which is which his partner. And they're like, look, you know, you're young in the business, this, that, and the other. If there's any deals coming through, this, that, and the other, let us know. We'll partner them. We'll finance them. We'll, we'll chop up the profit. And then whatever other stuff we have, we'll give to you on memo. Gave me a little bit of jewelry on memo, a few watches that, it, that they had left over just sitting in their safe. And we kind of started doing deals together. And then about, uh, I guess about four years later, uh, we started, like, my business grew. We started actually partnering deals properly where we paid for half the stuff. They would find deals. We would find deals. And then we would just kind of partner. And then one day, we're in the car driving to it, actually to a trade show in New York. And Gary's like, you know, listen, maybe we should, we should partner up, like, legitimately. And I'm like, listen, Gary, I got news for you. We're more or less partners. We probably have about two and a half to three million dollars worth of shit together at this point. Like we're kind of already our partners. I said you can get rid of your office. We can, you know, basically put together, uh, you know, all the back office stuff and operations under one roof, saving money that way when companies merge. And that's what we ended up doing. And then Alex, who was the money guy in their company, I'm like, well, you know, if we partner up, let me have your balance sheet. Alex is like, I'm sorry, what? I'm like, well, you know, your accounts payables, receivables, how much inventory you have, because obviously your company is worth a lot more than mine. I'm going to owe you some money in between. He's like, oh, I, I can put that together. Shows up three days later at my office with a stack of papers like this. Literally, it was it was probably five inches thick. And I'm like, what's this? He's like, well, you asked me to put the receivables together. It's like, so I went into all my paper invoices. I put them all together. You know, those old school calculators that print out the tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, have, yeah. so you stacks of different invoices with a little piece of tape, you know, with the totals on the bottom. And I'm like, fuck me, right? Meanwhile, I have computerized inventory, I have accounting systems, I have I mean, you know, my 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 at this point, you know, my company's like legitimately all yeah. computerized. You just like gotta this. hit export. <laughs> and I'm just like, fuck. So granted his numbers were to the penny, except they were all on paper. Like they literally had general ledgers, like wow. you know, those long yeah. books. And I'm like, well, fuck. And I'm like, well, how many pieces of inventory do you think you have? Because look, in the watch business, we have 200 pieces, 300, 500 pieces at, at like that at the most, right? He's like, oh, I don't know, give or take 12, 11,000 pieces. Oh, and I'm like, and I got a bag and tag and computerize all this. It took me six months because wow. the business was running, right? But I had to inventorize mm -hmm. everything, put it in my system. It took me six months till I finally got everything on a system. But one thing, I was making fun of Alex. I'm like, you guys are so old school. He's like, go ahead, ask me any question. Give me a, a vendor, a customer, a year, a month. I don't care what it is. I will pull up an invoice, a purchase order, and an invoice in a matter of under five minutes. His filing system was Jedi. He still has it. I don't know why, but he kept it, I guess, for mm -hmm. memories. Well, it probably works for him. It's fantastic. Yeah. So that's how Gary, that's how Gary happened.
That is an amazing then, story. When did when did Adrian come into the picture? So Adrian, uh, at the age of 17, 16 to 17, was a, a bit wild, right? Uh, a wild child. That. And he was, no. he was, yeah, he was partying. <laughs> he, was doing, he was doing dumb shit, which is what, you know, what kids do. You know, they do dumb shit at their age. And Where did he grow up? In Jersey or Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania suburbs of, of Philadelphia. So Gary, at the time, you know, we have a relationship and this is, we weren't partners yet. He comes to me, he's like, Roman, I don't know what to do with this fucking kid. Maybe you talk to him because, you know, close in age, this, that, and the other. Maybe you can talk some sense into him. Can you hire him? And I told Gary right away, I said, listen, the worst thing you can do is hire somebody that you can't fire, right? I mean, you have a relationship, no matter what happens, somehow we'll affect it and this, that, and the other. But in the back of my head, I just something my voice told me, like, look, this kid is really not going the right direction. And I know that you can help him. Literally, some voice in the back of my fucking head told me this. So I hired him. And it was uh it was interesting for the first year. I made him do stupid shit, like fill out spreadsheets, like really busy work, like the shittiest work you could possibly find purposely, <laughs> which was pissing him off even more. And he kept Start the fuck, he kept ball. fucking up. Until I almost killed him one day, literally. I threw an iPhone at his head uh, at such force. I wanted to crack his skull. He pissed me off so bad. <laughs> and somehow after that, everything was peachy. Adrian did a 180 degree turnaround. And here we are many, many years later. And he's irreplaceable, let's just say. And he, he, he really, he's a huge part of the company. Definitely, definitely my number one. And, you know. Well, Marco is kind of trying to buy for that spot right now. So You're maybe, to get maybe if Adrian and Gary doesn't kill him. <laughs> exactly. So but uh, that's, the, a, uh, that's the short version of it. I gave him there are... that cell phone that I threw at his head. I had it. And many years later, at his wedding two years ago, I wrapped it in gift wrap and I gave it to him as a present. Oh, how funny. <laughs> nice. How old is kid now? kid's got to be a year old now, right? Uh, no, she's two. Wow. So uh, with was... Ad with Adrian, uh, the he so he meets this girl. She, she's the daughter of actually another good, very good friend of ours who part of the poker game, by the way. And uh, I've known the guy for longer than I've known Gary. A really cool guy. And and uh, so he meets this girl, and he actually came to my office when he he started talking about her. I didn't even know who it was, and like just by the look on his face, I knew like this is going to be the girl. And then I found out who it was. I was even happier about it. But uh, he, they they make plans to get married. COVID hits, right? And so the wedding gets postponed once. Then it gets postponed twice. And they're like, "Well, fuck. Well, this is kind of screwed." Like it's like they had everything planned out. The wedding hall, everything was already planned out. So now they gets it gets postponed more than a year. So they decide, look, why are we gonna waste time? They went, and, you know, got the paperwork signed, so they're officially married. So let's have a kid, because our our actual wedding is not going to be till a year from now. So they ended up having a child. Then the big wedding came. It was beautiful ceremony, this, that, and the other. And Russians, the way we do weddings, we'll do the big wedding first day, and then there'll be a second day afterwards, because there's always a lot of food left over and people that are coming in from out of town. So we'll do like a second day party. Well, the second day party takes place at this Russian restaurant called Golden Gates. That's where everybody goes in Philadelphia. So the guy that was running the show, the MC, it was a different MC from the night before. They get on stage and Adrian and Jessica get on stage and, and now they have Viv. So they take the baby on stage. Meanwhile, the MC has no idea that they had a baby because of COVID because they decided not to wait. And, and, and he comes up, he's like, oh my God, such a cute baby. Whose baby is this? And Jessica goes, that's our baby. The guy doesn't skip a fucking beat. Goes, wow, you guys work really, really fast. One night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's how, like that's a, how Viv happened. That's like so, a baby microwave. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was funny though because like the guy literally doesn't skip a beat. He's like, oh, you guys work really fast. <laughs> plug plug my phone in here. There were uh, two questions from the audience. One of them is is I think a happy note. One of them is. A sour note but i don't i want to give you the opportunity to address yourself because we our mods addressed it we addressed it by saying we don't want to answer the question however you may want to answer the question if it's the mole don't pull it up that's OC. okay uh, he gets no, OC gets all right no so the happy question then 
I just you I want that. You can I give me both. I don't care. I have to explain. No, it has nothing to do with you. It's just the person who asked it. I give them no love, no shine because they give us no respect on their platform. Good with that. Yeah, we know you're not. We're not we know it's such a why do I have a feeling? Before. Why do I have a feeling? I know who they're talking about. But okay, let's go to the next question. A happy question, <laughs> and I'm actually really interested in this one. Is uh, you, you know, Marcus's business has been doing. He's been apparently doing quite well. He's had some celebrity customers and stuff. How is his business going? He's still in school. Um, you know, how, how has that been developing and unfolding? So Marcus, Marcus is no longer in school after he finished his, uh, first year of college on a Dean's list. He called us up and he said, mom, dad, he's like, um, I said, good job. And he said, well, that's great. Except I didn't do shit. Like I got on the Dean's list and I literally didn't do anything. When Marcus was, you know, when Marcus graduated high school, uh, his business was doing over a million a year at that point. And he, I think the year he graduated college, he made probably close to a quarter million dollars all on his own. And question came up, well, what the fuck do I need college for, right? And the way we do things in my family is that, and the most important thing, and I say this to everybody, is we communicate with our kids since they're born, right? We know everything about their life. We always talk. We always have you know, family meetings, communication is key, right? Talk to your children. Otherwise, you won't know what the fuck they're doing. And uh, I told him, I said, Mark, I said, listen, ultimately, the decision is up to you. And mind you, he applied to six business schools, got into every single one of them to include Northeastern because he had the grades. And I think part of the reason he got into all these business schools is along with the essay that you're supposed to write, he actually submitted his tax returns. Like legitimately, <laughs> like that was the that's smartest move the kid fantastic. ever fucking made, right? Yeah. And Northeastern was a big reach for him. That's what his college counselor told him, because at the time I think the acceptance was like eight point nine percent, and he got into Northeastern. He wasn't planning on going and just to show off his counselor, which was the cool part. So long story short, uh, I told him I said, "Look, Marcus, ultimately it's your decision. I know your business is doing well. You already know you know how to make money, regardless of what you're going to do. But think of it this way: college will give you connections." college will give you something you may have not learned in high school he went to a really good school and he did learn a lot he took some advanced classes but i said you may still learn something in college that will be very useful for you down the line i said but last but not least i said don't be in a rush to grow up i want you to go to college i want you to have the spirit i want you to do a keg stand i want you to get pissed fucking drunk till you're puking all over the place i want you to have those experiences your typical college experiences you know i've had them and i had a great time i'm like so he thought about it. It's like, okay. And he decided to go for the year, uh, open up a store while he's at it. And that was the first time he went from wholesale to retail. And, you know, he went the same route as me. And there's no secret. Hired a videographer, invested money into marketing, YouTube channel, you know, social media, and so on and so forth. And it really took off. For him, it's really location. Where he is today, the location is absolutely amazing. The, with the new store he just opened up, he's in the middle of Brickell in the heat of it all. Wow. And he's doing really well on both ends, both the wholesale and the retail end. Last year, the, the, a little over $4 million in business. And that's when he called and said, guys, this is a waste of my time and a waste of your money. And I told him, hey, you owe me 75000 and go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have any interest in getting in the watch business with you or no. he just wants to do No, he, one of the things about Marcus is he's, he's always wanted to do things that would make him feel as if he achieved something on his own. He knows he has my full backing if he needs it and he uses it, but he only uses it in terms of advice. A lot of guys out there commenting, Oh, he got, you know, dad backed them up. Marcus took $2,000 of his own money when he started his business and he never took a dollar from me. It was only about a year and a half, almost two years into his business where I told him, I said, look, I looked at his books cause he kept proper books cause I made them. And I said, listen, right now you're running into a bit of a cash flow problem. So I said, why don't you take, I have a credit line open on some of the real estate that I owned, which is 100000 I said, 120000 I said, I don't use it. It's empty. Feel free to use it because I felt confident that he's not going to fuck things up, basically. And he used it for a year and then paid me back. And he said, I don't want to use it again. I'm like, why? He's like, because I still feel like, you know, it's cheating kind of thing, right? So he used it once, never used it again. And then... He's always been using his own thing, but watches were, I think that he, when he opens up maybe like a bigger flagship store, 
maybe he'll put watches in there but he said even if i do it'll be known that these are from luxury bazaar kind of thing right right, right. which i think would be a yeah, cool that's concept a yeah. Like, yeah kind of like kith does with the vintage stuff in there uh some exactly of yeah exactly i mean listen like my, a my well friend... curated collection that goes good with aligns with sneaker culture and stuff like that so kith uh, uh ronnie fig is really good friend with my friend uh greg yuna so Greg Yuna's yeah, yeah, jewelry Greg. is in his store, uh, you know, in, in his yep. boutiques, which is kind of cool. But I think that, uh, listen, Marcus understands the concept of building a product rather than making money. And I think he's on a way to open up. I told him, I said, open up five to 10 stores, create a name. And what's more important is not what you're selling. What's more important is selling a T-shirt that sells hype on it rather than a pair of Nike sneakers to a point where you can start getting collaborations with bigger companies once they notice you or you can just sell the whole thing to a bigger fish like a kith or you know an undefeated and move on and do yeah. something else yeah. undefeated Sorry, just who you got the tracks ego fight. yeah i was just thinking that i wanted to switch gears so here's the, whole... here's the issue with that right <laughs> and and they're both my friends the problem is this is now tracks we all know he's fucking extra you know and the stuff that he puts on social media I texted him the other day after his last rant. I'm like, bro, you had me fucking jump up scared for a second there, right? The problem is this. Is Nico has yet to commit to getting into shape. Now, I think Nico is a scrabbler, right? He's a, he's a big kid, right? Even though he's on the shorter side, he's still a, a bigger kid. He's double the size of tracks. The problem is this, and I don't know if any of you guys ever took a boxing workout. In 30 seconds he's flat, gonna you're gassed. Now, I uh -huh. used to... I used to do CrossFit and HIT and all kinds of stuff where I was in pretty good shape. But the problem is, is that if you don't stay in that shape, the minute I, I, I had a guy in a gym put on those things to HIT, right? And I, after 30 good, seconds, yeah. I promise you, I was spent. And that's somebody that I was able to do a HIT class for 45 minutes straight nonstop. And boxing is a different ballgame completely. And that was just me boxing the guy not hitting, hit. hitting back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy's yeah. not hitting back. That's right. just me hitting. And you're it's, not dodging. It's different type of breathing. It's different type of it, your your cardio has you to lose be your on cardio a different level. real quick. Yeah, you lose it real quick though. It's not like weights so, either way. You could pick it back up. Uh, if it's a, it if it's a boxing match and tracks, you know, gets into cardio shape and he's half his size, I think Nico is gonna have an issue because he, I don't think he'll be able to swing his arms for more than a minute. Yeah. Who do you think we could get to box TPG? Because he's like the ultimate villain, right? So you need like the he's like the <laughs> ultimate heel. Adrian, so you, Adrian, yes. No, you need like Adrian. The Adrian, good Adrian guy, you, nobody, you don't want to box Adrian. Adrian is in no, tip top we, shape. We to Adrian, I want to see Adrian, Adrian box, box TPG. The, <laughs> the problem, the problem is that at this point, I don't, I can't think of a dealer in this entire world that would want to touch Anthony with a ten foot pole. It's just that what what follows behind, yeah. the drama that follows behind is just it's way too much, and for us it's like, like after the blackout, right? You know we caught heat for like thirty days. After the last thing, like the minute Anthony does something, me, Nico, other channels, it's comment and you and Instagram accounts is comments, 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 right? Because that community of whoever doesn't like him very much they're relentless i do have to give credit to one guy on that reddit the guy that made the videos did you see those oh. where he like does the voiceovers that's some hilarious fucking shit yeah, i told no there's some great content creators on that so there's a content creator he made a youtube channel and i think his icon says tugs 365 i forget <laughs> i forget the channel name but like he made like five videos where Mark Wahlberg is talking to Anthony and like it's <laughs> fucking funny and yeah. it's good. Uh, I actually like I maybe I should hire that guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's actually really good. <laughs> no, he's great. He says that's Cornelius. Cornelius. I don't know Cornelius. That's right, Cornelius. He makes some really good TPG yeah. stuff too. By the way, he he's, but he does like these. I guess he uses AI to like voice over and he finds just the right clips. It's just it's pretty amazing actually what the internet can do. Now, Kent says Wizard versus TPG, but the Wizard is in too bad a shape. I can't recommend him. To yeah, Wizard's been in and out of the house. Now, by the way, speaking of Wizard, so I got a message from him. Uh, so last I left it off when this whole shit popped off and I got on the live, uh, I think it was Paul Thorpe's live. I don't remember whose live it was. And 
I said, I'm going to get a list and this, that, and the other. And I got a list of a bunch of stuff, a bunch of the people that he owes money to. Me and Marco went over it. We were, a couple of names were missing. We added it to the list. And he was supposed to send me certain proof, right? I said, listen, you can tell me all you want that you got fucked. But if you got fucked by a guy, there's WhatsApp messages, there's emails, there's something there that I can at least feel 100%. And let's just say post all that, he didn't leave me feeling 100%. Uh, that that like I called bullshit on some things. And I said, at this point, I can't really back it up because I don't really have any proof. Like I needed, I told him right up, whatever. He sent me a bunch of stuff and me and Marker looked at it and we're like, yeah, this is not enough. And he never followed up with the rest of it. Which means I said, I can't make a decision one way or the other. But the last interaction I had when he sent me an email saying that he's been slowly paying people off, but I don't know how to confirm that. Uh, I'm in a group and yeah, well, there's some people have gotten a little bit of movement, but it's been very slow. But is he paying? I guess yeah, as, as of last week, uh, someone got a payment. So yeah. Yes. Okay. So, the, so, that, the... so that makes me feel a little bit better because if he got himself into a hole, now whether it's a guy in Asia that fucked him or whether he overspent the money, it, irrelevant, but yeah. as long as he's still active and still actively paying people then i'm okay with that he he is actively he is actively paying some people and then he is also very actively blocking some other people that he owes money oh, and right. I, I was just saying that to be real clear because he he adds conditions on how he feels he is treated to pay people back and i'm not a big fan of that no if you owe people money you pay people money back i i didn't i don't recoup my uh, money from anthony yet I was supposed to get twenty grand last week or the week before. I didn't get that yet. Are you uh, still in contact with him? He contacts yeah, you regularly. Yeah, yeah. I, if I if I text him, he will respond. If I call him, he'll pick up the phone. Is he still selling watches actively? Because people send me stuff all the time. Like today, I got one, and on his um, on his story, he put. I'll pull it up right now. Actually, hang on one second. Uh, here we go. I'm back in the watch game. Is what he put on his story today. I don't know. I don't know how. I honestly don't know how. Look, I, I I hope for Anthony's sake that he does have a little bit of funding behind him, whatever. Because look, you can't just all the money can't disappear overnight, right? So in it, because if he does, I've I've said it to his face, so I'm not afraid to say it here. He's a cockroach. He's been stepped on five times, and he gets back up, and he's still alive. So if he does have any type of funding that was left over, whether it's from the sale of some of his motorcycles or whatever else, he, he can get into a rhythm where he can start flipping some watches again. I don't know to whom, but if he can get into that rhythm, one thing about him is that people have called him a gajillion names over and over, but he was good at what he did, right? So if he can get back on a horse and do it that way, I just, I don't know how much money exactly he owes. I don't know if that $5 million number is real. If it is, it's a fucking long hole to climb out of right. but uh i guess time will only show so uh just real quick because i don't want to forget uh let's uh plug your son's store just to put it out there for anyone because you got 240 you. people watching i don't know if anyone is watching i think ali can probably nobody's drop that watching. Me. nobody's watching i'll drop yeah i'll drop the links <laughs> and it's called hype hyp right yep 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 i just want to make sure Speaking yeah, he's of got, he's, his YouTube channel uh, is picking up. He's up to almost fifteen thousand followers on there. Oh, nice! So we put it. Oh, this is this the is the YouTube website, guys. HypeMiami .com. Make sure you check it out. Thank you. Uh, and I think yeah, of course. And we have speaking of hype, we have Reg joining us. Hi, hey Ari. guys. <laughs> hey. See, Ari's he always hype, slides man. on when the big guests pop up. JJ. No. I've never seen that about Ari. <laughs> no, it, it, was, it was Marco, Ari, wasn't it? It was Marco. It was Marco. It was totally Ari. Marco. It was, it was Marco. Marco. Yeah. I literally just literally just finished my work, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Ari found a man without a shirt and had to hop on. Now we got a question from Zeppi, two dollars super chat. He says, Roman, any thoughts on the Alpha Crown robbery? Uh, okay, we speculated a little about this, but I don't know about the Alpha Crown robbery. Somebody, okay, me so in. all right, so you know, Wolven watches, you know, Josh and right. the other brother Navarro brothers, they split up from the other two guys they were partners with. At Those Wolven. were the two white guys they were partnered up yeah. with, the Hispanic friend. So, so they left, and supposedly they left them, the other two guys with the lease and everything else. And they, and the original got, store, from, and the original right? store. And they got robbed for about five hundred fifty thousand in watches, some of which they didn't even have logged yet that were on consignment with serial numbers and stuff. 
so that was like a couple days ago it just recently happened um that they got cleaned out for about five 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 so five one, fifteen. one, one of the issues in this and i talk to a lot of young dealers like if you ask anybody in the industry you know sometimes people even say i give too much information but like I, i'm a strong believer in working with your competition especially ha helping out the younger guys and there's a mm -hmm. ton of young dealers that will attest to that is one thing i tell them all the time is i said if you're going to go the route of social media, if you're going to go the route of YouTube, especially like you guys can see my office inside and out on a daily basis, right? The problem with that is you better have great security and you better be insured out the wazoo and you better have a process in place that with us, the minute something hits my office and a FedEx box gets open, it immediately is locked with serial number, with everything else. Like the very first thing that's done is my in my incoming queue downstairs in shipping, a picture is taken of the watch, the uh, paperwork, serial mm -hmm. numbers, et cetera, Roman, et cetera. Roman, even before that, we always log, you know, digitally. So we'll, we'll actually record every single unboxing we do just so this way, you know, there's no, you know, because every label we send uh, is always insured, right? So no matter what, let's say something gets happened, the package gets switched, et cetera, it's it's yeah, we already know the serial number ahead can of I, time. Can I pause you two on that real quick? Yeah. So yeah. going back earlier when JJ and I were talking about you the the nitpicking on dollars and dimes, the dollar store stake versus like legitimate, this type of overhead is what makes the difference. So for the yeah. people who are just now catching up, there's a whole conversation earlier about choosing reputable gray market dealers and why we choose to deal with certain right. ones, right? So please. So continue. I have I have video footage. First of all, I have video footage of anything that comes into my office, anything that goes out of my office, right? Like if you go down to my shipping room, you can, you'll can you notice there are specific areas dedicated to incoming goods and outgoing goods where everything is recorded on video. Anytime something comes in, the very first thing that happens is an image is taken and is, and is kept in a system that shows the incoming queue, right? It's sort of like the unboxing that you guys don't see. Everything We know like when a watch comes in, I'll know everything that it comes with, include the tags, the the paperwork, whatever it might come with, it will be included in that photo. So, so before it even makes its way upstairs. So recording this stuff is extremely important. Insurance is another one. I am insured out the fucking wazoo. And every time I pay my insurance bills, I think of Chris Rockstead when he says insurance is in case shit happens. And if it doesn't happen, shouldn't I get my money back? Because that's how I feel every time I pay that bill. But if you're going to be out there, now my office is Fort Knox. So in case anybody's watching and you guys want to come in guns blazing, I recommend you do not. Not only can you not get into my office physically or get out of my office if you made it inside, there's probably about five very trigger happy guys inside with lots of guns. On top of that, the police department who is 45 seconds away from my office. And I have three alarm systems that are state of the art. So I invested all that money. I invested about a quarter million dollars into security alone, right? So you say coming armed with bottles of ragu is not a good idea? No, no, that's it's just not a good idea. If if you guys have ever seen my gun safe, or Adrian's gun safe, or my very good buddy Luke, who's across the street at a gun range with another fifteen very trigger happy guys there, trust me, you don't want to do that. You just just if you want to do Mission Impossible style, and you can get past my three alarm systems, my bank vault, and everything else under the sun then good luck to you. I have insurance for that. But going back to the robberies, a lot of these guys, they, and I actually said that to Anthony, walking around with backpacks of watches yeah, and all those things. I am, you will never see me. Like I'm going to a trade show right now. I carry a backpack in which I have my iPad and stuff like that. I specifically don't even take my backpack to the trade show just so that when I come out of the trade show, people don't get ideas that I may have something in my backpack. I'm always better safe than sorry. Right. Numerous times I will choose armored carriers instead of somebody flying somewhere with a watch. If somebody flies out somewhere with a watch, I know exactly where they're going to be, how they're going to go there, and I know exactly where they're meeting and who they're meeting, and I make sure that that trip is actually insured. Anytime we do these events, we just did an event in California for uh, uh, a charity, right? The last video that popped off. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We were insured. It cost me $6,000 just to insure that six hours that I was there. And I had two police officers there. I don't take any chances. Because what a lot of these kids don't realize is that you have your life inside a showcase or a backpack or, uh, you know, wherever you may be. So don't take those chances. Yes, it's going to cost you. But don't take any chances, especially when you're dealing with other people's goods. 
So you got stuff on consignment. Yeah. How do you explain to somebody that I got robbed and it wasn't insured because it wasn't logged? That's a tough cookie to swallow for, for a client. So just don't take any chances. So again, I don't know what transpired with those boys. And I, I'm sorry that it happened. But again, there are so many measures to prevent that from happening. So many well, measures. Let me ask the ugly question, right? So well, some of the speculation on, on some of the other dealer chats, some pay-for-pay -pay dealer chats and the Reddit, is that some of these smaller players are uh, are doing inside jobs to get out of a, a market that is crashing because they don't have enough liquidity to survive? Is that something in your experience that you think you've seen happen? Not that I'm saying alpha. So what I, so what I've experienced experience. in my industry in the past is I've experienced two things. Number one, if people want to get out in our industry, they they can simply go chapter eleven and that's that and be under the protection of that. And I've seen that happen numerous times. A lot, most of the time it happened on a jewelry side of things rather than watches. What I've also seen happen in the past is I've seen people do sort of like a pyramid scheme, right? I've seen guys get into the business fast and hard. It takes yeah. you a year to two years to create a name for yourself. All you have to do is, you know, do 500 to 1,000 transactions with a multitude of this viewers, attend these trade shows, right? And you build up a report, right? Where, hey, I've sold this guy 100 watches. You know, he's spent $2 million with me so far. And he's always good. He's always pays on time. He's a member of the show and so on and so forth, right? And then next thing you know, three years go by. We had a guy that did this uh, at IWJG. This guy was going back 10 years. The guy came in, started buying stuff up at the trade shows, paying everybody on the spot, then started displaying at these trade shows, started selling stuff to people, Back and forth, back and forth. He did this for about three years until, actually, oddly enough, it was me somehow. Uh, I get a phone call from uh, a dealer in New York, somebody who's been in the business 30 years, somebody I would trust on my entire safe. Then he's Boris. He goes, Roman, he's like, do you have a, a 5970 paddock? I said, as a matter of fact, I just bought one in white gold. Don't quote me on the price. I think I told him 120000 at the time. And he's like, Awesome. Do me a favor. Send me pictures of the box and papers. I'm going to forward it to my client. See if he'll take it. I sent him a picture of the papers with the serial numbers because I have nothing to hide from this guy. And he calls me up. He's like, Roman, he's like, something is off. I'm like, why? He's like, that watch with that serial number, I just sold to this guy, Jay. I'll just call him Jay for all intents and purposes, right? I just sold it to this guy named Jay. But I sold it to him for 126000 You're selling it to me for one twenty. I'm like, well, shit, I just bought it from this guy for one oh seven. He's, he, I'm like, like literally two days ago. I'm like, did he pay you for the watch yet? He goes, no, he did not. And I'm like, fuck, this is every sign of a scheme, right? Because you can, he, he, he buys it from him for one twenty six, sells it to me for one oh seven. Literally two months later, guy files chapter 11. He's in Florida, so he's protected like even more because they can't take his house and none of that stuff. And then after all said and done, we did the math. I talked to the guys whom he owed money to. He didn't owe me any money, thank God. And he ended up basically investing about $3 million. And in three years' time, he walked away with nine. That's the nature of our business because it's all handshake-based. It's all, you know, and this is... I don't know if it's a Ponzi scheme by definition, but it's it's you you build up your business, you build it up, and they say, you know what? I got nine million dollars worth of shit. I'm gonna liquidate it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna exit legally. He still lives. In, I know where the guy lives. Still here in Florida, enjoying life. This is America for you guys. <laughs> yeah, scary, it's scary unfortunate, shit. But yeah, that's the way it could go down. See, what we were thinking was, well, I mean, not that we're saying that people are doing this, but the thought process was that these people like smaller backpack dealers right bought in at higher prices and the prices have been steadily coming down so to get out of being upside down on it stage the robbery you know maybe split up a little money under the table with the thieves and then collect insurance on what they paid for it that's so there was a there's a company called parcel pro i don't know if you guys ever heard of them so uh, uh a friend of mine mike actually started probably 10 years ago it was a way to, because not a lot of people didn't have ways to ship insured packages. FedEx would only insure you for so much. And if you want to insure it for more, it, it cost, it was not practical because it cost thousands of dollars to ship a package, right? The, the way we did it back in the day is I, I got a uh, policy with Lloyd's of London or Jules Block where 
they covered every package up to a hundred grand and I paid a blanket, uh, uh, what do you call it? Number a year for that. Right. And it cost me a ton of money for that. But once I broke it down by the number of packages we were shipping out, it made financial sense. So this guy, Mike opens up this company called partial pro where he was working with Lloyd's of London, basically took the same blanket policy. And there were a lot of rules. Things had to be double box signature required. It has to go to a particular address. As long as you follow the rules, your package get covered up to $250,000 at a cost where it made sense, where a dealer could ship something up to 250 grand, a cost of 150 to $200 versus like $2,000 with FedEx and FedEx wouldn't even go over like a certain amount. So he opened up the company, eventually he got, bought, he got bought out by UPS. UPS now owns Partial Pro. Well, as of about three or four years ago, uh, they made a rule that you can only ship one high value package a day with Partial Pro. And I called my rep there and I'm like, why? So they explained, they said, some dealers in the industry got, you know, whiff of this and all of a sudden, they would like it's very we send out labels all the time that are insured so if you want to ship a package i send you a label you ship it it's insured to me or anywhere else for that matter so these dealers what they did in a matter of a very short amount of time is they hit partial pro for like 20 plus million they send each other us to us tape labels and the packages would show up with a brick inside claim insurance here's the video it came up package obviously has been tampered with yada 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 pay me so to prevent that, they said, now you can only ship one package at a time. So this happened in our industry as well. So I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say it's not possible. It's very, very possible. The easiest way to get out of anything, and I don't care if you're in the watch industry, car industry, or whatever industry, is to claim insurance, right? I know, you know, the, you know a lot of, I've had watches come through uh, my hands where we've had stolen watches We've had really good fakes or movements removed or replaced or Frankenstein watches, right? Uh, even jewelry, like the high-end jewelry, a lot of these guys, what they do is, let's say you have a pair of Cartier or Hare Winston expensive earrings that are like 300,000. Well, you can clone one of them. So one is real, the other one is fake. Now you have two pairs of earrings that are $300,000. Had that happen. But with watches to do something like this, it's also very, very feasible. As you said, it's a lot easier to get out at the price to, hey, here's my invoices. This is what I, I paid 50,000 for five stainless steel Daytonas, pay me 250 grand. Well, you know, they're worth half that today, right? So it's, it's definitely a possibility that that can be done. The only problem with that is it's, it's now a criminal matter, right? Staging yeah. a robbery and it's insurance fraud. It's, it's so many different problems i mean it's just like i anybody that decides to do that i think going chapter 11 was a better call a better way to do it <laughs> well, no no i mean certainly legal but yeah but if you've been following the tpg thing or any number of other stuff you're like well apparently it's not a criminal matter because the guy needs to run around for however long you know one potential scheme after another again the 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 question of whether or not TPG is a scam is still up in the air, right? It's so people are saying this was a scam to begin with. Some people are saying he, you know, overspent. So like that's still a question that's up in the air, and we probably well, didn't will never he know. Say he overspent. He was very clear when he had his like come to Jesus video that his lifestyle far exceeded what was coming in, and you know he developed a bit alcohol addiction as well or it resurfaced with you know composed with gambling cocaine hookers you know whatever comes with that fast life he's doing, but i think it was pretty clear that that definitely was what happened but I, is that, I, does that make it, said, does that make it the truth no I, even i've said right. that it's not you can't necessarily say from the beginning he was actually playing to scam people out right he's admitted to getting in over his head falling in place or whatever even i've said that however there is a fundamental issue here that I think a lot of people are like have discussed and nobody's willing to address. So I want to see if Roman can address it. I'm not, I'm sure Roman's willing, but I'm not sure he can. It's an issue of somebody who had multiple felony background, his exits from the real estate industry, stuff like that, somehow still managed to get all the instruments needed to get into this business, get all the insurance and things like that, and be able to pull this off in the first place. That's right. Cool. The way so, like, the, and then the way people he started who have minor felonies can't even get a job at McDonald's. Like, so how the hell did that happen? 
So he, so the difference like between somebody like an Anthony versus somebody like the gentleman I just told the story about, the gentleman that I told the story about, we figured out that malicious came into this industry to do exactly what he did. He ran out of money, he, and he came in with money. He came in with 2 to $3 million to invest into this Ponzi scheme or whatever you want to call it, right? With Anthony, he truly came in with fucking nothing, and he built it up from nothing to something. Now, what helped him? YouTube, number one, because he came out on YouTube with something nobody has ever seen before. And number two, the market. He came in in the low part of the market, blew up his YouTube channel, his social media presence, where people fell in love with him and wanted to buy from him. And he took advantage of the hot market that was like the hottest I've ever seen in the market. It's the hottest it's ever been. So to, to say that he did the Ponzi scheme and this to do a Ponzi scheme, you have to come in with some fucking money. You have to come in with a money and a plan. Well, he had investors, right? Mm -hmm. Not a fraud. Yeah, he said he had two million from one one guy who. It was two and a half million from one guy, uh, whom I met. But it wasn't on day one. But it wasn't on day one. That's what I'm saying. That didn't happen. Yeah, until... But that doesn't mean you can't start a you know a yeah. Ponzi scheme. Exactly. I'm not saying that's exactly what he did. I, I'm not a you know a jury so or an investigator, so I can't say. But I'm just saying it's possible to eventually start. You could start off with good intentions right. and then fall into a Ponzi scheme at a certain point, which is usually how it happens, right? Nobody well, starts from day one like, hmm, I'm going to do a Ponzi scheme. I don't think... We need to get Daniel Actually, actually people, actually people do. I know numerous <laughs> cases. I know numerous cases in real estate, especially. It's very prominent. Like, I know a guy that uh, was selling condos down here in Florida. This is prior to 2008. The market was heating up and real estate was at its highest. And this guy invested about two to three million dollars building out a beautiful office with beautiful models uh models i mean house models uh you know limousine service helicopter service for potential clients like got it to a point where like you couldn't get an appointment with this guy he was so like people were standing in line to give him money and he ended up hitting uh about 25 million dollars worth of deposits and things of that nature like yeah. selling swampland basically he bought the land for no money it's a land that you couldn't possibly build anything on because there's little swamps so the land was there it was it was a pretty intricate scheme and uh so yeah most of the time most of these big guys when they do these ponzi schemes they they come in with money they come in with a plan they're really good at what they do i actually want to address that question down from okay. zeppi Roman, how hard is it to fraud an insurance company? Now, I'm not speaking from experience. I've never frauded an insurance company, but I'll tell you one thing. I've had insurance claims, and I've gone through the process of basically proving that, hey, you guys should pay me because I got fucked. And it's not an easy process because the first thing that the insurance, the very first thing the insurance company tries to figure out is how not to pay you. They literally have people that are, that's their jobs. These, I guess, I don't know what you want to call them, the guys that handle claims. So if anybody is out there trying to think that they can fraud an insurance company, they have investigators, they have all kinds of stuff, because I've gone through this. I've gone through this a multitude of times where I've had stuff stolen from me, where I've had what I've been frauded. I've had such stories, you know, because we have targets on our heads. Right. Just now, four guys, uh, there were four accounts created on, on a Facebook account in the matter of, I think, three days before Facebook shut them down. They frauded people for like twenty or $30,000 and people thought it was me. By the way, just real quick, if I could add on, um, like the whole uh, Ponzi scheme discussion, it's very easy. Something I mentioned earlier um, in the chat was that what people don't realize is there's very little cash buyers anymore, especially in the watch market, right? And the thing is, is for a smaller dealer who's working on very small margins, they often have to take on trades that they're not making a lot of money on. So again, it's very easy to get in over your head because essentially what you're doing is just, you know, kicking the can down the road, but eventually you can't, you know, there's no more, you know, there's no more room, you know, there's, you Run can't keep road. Yeah, yeah, you, you get the margin call. Yeah, yeah you, know, you get the margin call. Yeah, exactly. yeah you get the margin call. You yeah. run out of money basically, right? And then you just, you're just stuck with that inventory, right? And a lot of the time people think, you know, the stuff is super liquid. And that's why I said, like, the only complaint I get is I don't get good enough, you know, I don't give good, good enough trade values. Listen, it's not yeah, because I don't want to give people on straight. I'm just going, I'm going around Marco. Yeah. No, it, yeah, you heard listen, he said uh, Marco gets to make his own decisions too, so don't fall for that. Adrian told me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's always what I get. It's not me. It's Adrian. Adrian. Now, <laughs> right, right now, right now, just to switch gears a little bit, 
And I'll answer this question real quick from Lefty1999. Yes, we do buy watches from the outside United States and we do it on a daily basis. It's a very simple process if you know what you're doing. If you know how to import watches into the United States, you can buy from anywhere in the world. And the labels that we're able to send out along, what we do with clients overseas is we still send them our labels, but we also set, send it with a set of import docs so that the watch is properly imported into the United States. So, I mean, there are some countries where FedEx just won't operate and we won't import from there. Like, listen, I hear Baghdad is not so easy to import watches from nowadays, <laughs> uh, but the, for the most, of, most of the countries out there that are stable, you can import those in with just a simple, again, you get a label, you get a bunch of import docs and the watch arrives to us two to three days later and you get paid out the same way. But to... What was it? What was I? I was going to get into uh, something else that was important. I completely lost my train of thought. Basically, just to just to wrap up uh, what I was saying is the point is is whenever we take in you know into account a trade, first of all we have to factor the market, but then we also have to factor in future trades, right? Because again, the thing is is every watch that we get in, there's a very very high likelihood that people are going to offer trades on. You know what I mean? A day just for a Submariner, a day just plus X plus cash for a Daytona kind of thing. It happens all day long. I can't tell you guys how many times. And sometimes we just can't do it. It's like, listen, we can't justify selling such a liquid watch, you know, for, you know, essentially something that's going to sit in our inventory. As much as we want to help it, just, you know, sometimes it's for the I'll, best. I'll give, I'll give you a better one, Marco. So we, uh, we, we were introduced <laughs> to what we like to call whales as clients, right? A big client. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so this client sends us a list to the tune of, you know, in seven figure range. And he says, price it out. Uh, and a lot of times clients will ask for two prices. They'll ask, or we'd like to give two prices. Here's my buy price. This is what I'm ready to check for. And here's a sell price, right? And knowing that this gentleman picked up a lot of these pieces at retail and someone will going to carry a pretty big hit and so on and so forth. What we did is, especially considering this was our first transaction together, we're actually meeting the guy tomorrow night, uh, is we said, you know what, I'm going to, go a little bit i'm going to send you a, a little spreadsheet but i want you to call me because i want to i want to explain myself right because the numbers the ranges were pretty wide on the buy and the consignment so what i did for him is i said here's a consignment price here's a buy price and here's a liquidity factor this is something that we'll look at uh internally we have what's called a liquidity factor and it's a, it's a basically a scale from one to five five being most liquid like a daytona and one being least liquid like say independence and they, he, I, I said, you, what you'll notice, you'll notice a huge gap between consignment and purchase on liquidity level one and a very small gap between li uh, liquidity level five. And this is how we look at it. If the liquidity level is one, and I know it may take me three to four months to sell a particular watch, I'm going to buy it much, much cheaper than I'm going to consign that watch. And the reason for that is because it's return on investment over time. It's a simple formula that we use. And, you know, guys tend to get upset. Oh, my God, you offered me this. It's on Chrono for this, but you offered me this. So, well, first of all, don't look at Chrono prices because they're plus minus 80 percent and half the listings aren't real. And, and there's outdated listings that are very, very cheap and outdated listings that are very, very expensive. And most of the time, people just fish for leads on Chrono 24. Or, or don't people. even have the watch. It'll exactly. Say they, fish for get, they fish for leads. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, so when we, when it comes to taking these trades, it's me taking a trade is no different than me buying a watch, right? I look at exactly the same factors. I look at liquidity levels. I look at how liquid is the watch and the line between the buy and the sell or consignment, let's say, if we decide to take it on consignment, is going to be pretty wide on the watch that's a lot less liquid. And I've always been transparent about this. And I've told buyers this, I said, whenever you're taking a, doing a deal, and I don't care what deal you're doing out there, a smart person will always look at both sides, right? And usually a good deal is when both parties walk away unhappy, right? So right. <laughs> if, you, if you're able to be conscious and look at both sides of the, the token, then you won't either get upset or you'll understand and you'll figure out whether it's a good deal or not. And that's really what it comes down. That's what Marco is talking about. We can't take everything and anything. And sometimes it doesn't make sense for me to sell a stainless steel Daytona. I take a 12-year-old Panerion trade that might yeah. sit for a while. Yeah, that makes sense. We have uh, Frank Philpot, two dollars super chat says luxury bazaar number one gray market dealer. Thank you. There you go. You got a fan there, and we got a super chat from our very own Ali Reza, ten dollars seventy seven cents. Says I want to thank Jeremy for joining us for the first time, his unboxing and sticking it out for our distinguished and friendly guest. 
and that Marco well, guy. <laughs> well, I got a question. How often, how often, let's say some my watch got stolen, what's the chances of me recovering it somehow? Uh, slim to none. And the reason yeah. for that is because you have to understand that if the watch gets stolen, it goes right out to the gray market. It'll go to a pawn shop. It'll go to a dealer who is not weary and not able to check whether the watch is stolen or not. When you sell a watch to us, whether you're trading or selling, we make you fill your life away, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how we don't get stolen watches. We deter that by making you provide identification, making you fill out all type of paperwork, signing an actual contract, right? It's a process that anytime I buy a watch or I take a trade in, it's the same process that people go through. So as I'll go to either a smaller dealer or a pawn shop or somewhere else, it can get flipped 10 times over, make it back out into the market, right? And even make it back into the hands like mine the difference is is that if i'm buying a watch from a dealer they're going to give me an invoice and i'm only going to buy from mm -hmm. dealers with whom i have recourse from right if something is too good to be true i just don't buy it right mm -hmm. but the odds of your, that watch ever surfacing again is slim to none but stay tuned there is a product that's going to hit the market here shortly it's called i don't know if you guys heard paul talking about the digital watch vault that's a product that's going to hit the market right that's going to be tied directly into, uh, oh, funny, the question just came up. Yeah. Okay, so the digital watch vault, I'm actually involved in that. We are actually involved in that. And the reason I got involved in that is because I actually believe in that product. And the reason I believe in that product, when I was first approached with it, I'm like, yeah, whatever. I've seen this 10 times over. It's been ten, pitched 10 times over. The difference between the two products is now this product is directly tied into law enforcement agencies, which means it's tied into the U.S. law enforcement and also the Interpol. Your watch gets stolen, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a police report. That police report lives in a database with a serial number. This system is going to have a direct tie to that database. So if a watch has been digitally certified by the digital watch vault, that means it went through and checked all the appropriate agencies to make, to make sure that that serial number is not flagged as a stolen watch. And I, I think the later version is also going to tie into insurance companies because a lot of people claim watches with insurance companies as well. And it's really redundant because in order to claim something stolen with the insurance company, you have to have a police report. We actually just did it. We just got uh, hit uh, by a, I guess, identity theft. Somebody pretended to be one of our clients that we've done business with for a long time. And uh, we got hit for a $20,000 watch. What's the first thing we did? We made a police report before going to insurance route or whatever else. So, yeah, uh, I am. I feel bullish about uh, the digital watch vault. I know the people behind it. I know the money that's behind it. I know there's a big runway behind it, meaning that there's money behind the product. And that's something that I'm going to implement on my entire website for my every single watch that comes through the door. I think also the hard part, whenever there's a stolen watch, it's um, hard to get the watch back just because... It goes like off, like for example, I think Paul Thorpe had a Rolex stolen uh, from him, and the watch was sent back into Rolex. Obviously, the serial number was tagged as like stolen, so they knew it was stolen. And Rolex has basically been holding his watch for like the right. past four years. I think he's been saying right because essentially, like, there's this whole process to it's determine a GMT of Master too. I think too. Yeah, it's a I GMT Master too. It's like determining the chain of custody and. You know who actually owns the watch? Did the buyer have prior knowledge? You know, is there intent behind him buying the so? Like, it's a whole pro. That's probably the hardest part if you don't submit kind of an insurance claim, right? Obviously, if you submit an insurance claim, then it's on the insurance to get the watch. But yeah, that's it, that's. I've had hardest. watches consigned to me from insurance companies. So yeah. a watch gets stolen, insurance pays out, customer gets his money, the watch resurfaces. The, insur the, the insurance claims the watch, gets the watch. Now the insurance company owns the watch because the guy's already gotten paid out. And now it's up to them to sell. So I've had some insurance companies uh, send some things on consignment to us saying, hey, these are watches that were, you know, and they unflag the watches with the companies and everything. So now the watch is legitimate again. The person yeah. that already got paid gets notified. They know about the watch, so there's no drama. And then it's up to insurance companies to get their money out. But and, yeah, I would uh, I would go and watch that video. I think Paul Thorpe has it on his channel still. It was a, uh, it's pretty crazy story. Like how he got his GMT stolen. They found the watch. It got sent to Rolex, and 
yeah it's we're, not... we're gonna we're gonna do a detailed video on this uh uh, uh digital watch vault right we're gonna i'm gonna show people uh both from the back end and the front end how the system works open up all the cars and say hey this is exactly how it works and the reason we're not afraid is because the connections that it took you can imagine getting direct access to interpol and the u.s uh, police authorities it's a big to do right, right. so there's nobody out there that's going to be able to duplicate that. Even In the there's... instance, Jeremy was asking, would digital watch vault actually help with the return to the original owner? Because I heard the like flagging with uh, customer, you know, with authorities and the uh, watch brands. Just so here's what happens nine out of ten related. times in our industry: people that sell watches that end up being stolen, stolen, they don't do it maliciously. We've had a fair share of stolen watches that came across our desk. Now, what happens, here's what happens with a stolen watch. I had a watch that came back to me seven years later. It was a baby in a doll, which I sold to somebody for like 70 grand. I wish I could buy one today for seven grand, right? (laughs) And so it was an iron baby in a doll that I sold for like $78,000. Seven years later, this thing comes back and says, hey, listen, sold it to a client. Client went to RM, got it serviced, came back flagged. Okay. Return the watch. And I go down the chain. Hey, where did I get this watch from? I got it from such and such person. And it goes down to the lowest common denominator until the individual that ends up holding the bag at the end doesn't have recourse, which is why when I purchase watches, especially from dealers, I make sure they're reputable dealers that I have recourse with, whom I can call seven years later and get my money back. Now, I felt pretty damn salty because I think my cost on the watch is like 70 grand at the time, right? And that's all I got back. You know, even though the watch today is worth, you know, over 200000 But that's kind of how that works. So majority of the dealers, they have no idea or they miss something somewhere where they don't know the watch is stolen. But if it's a reputable dealer and you have recourse with them, that there's really no issue. So this digital watch wall thing is actually a really big help because, like, when we, first, when we launch it first, I'm going to take every single watch in my inventory and I'm going to run it through it. I mean, I'm going to have back-end access, so I'll be able to, like, bulk upload it, right? But every single dealer now is going to be able to log on and check that watch before they buy it. And if there's a flag, guess what? The person, they're, they're going to notify the person they're buying it from. And that person is going to say, oh, shit, where did I get it? And eventually, those watches can make it back to the, either the insurance companies or their rightful owners. So, yes, the answer is yes, it will help. It'll take a little bit of time for it to load, right? Because... If people don't use it, then it's an issue. But I guarantee you, every collector out there, whoever went out there and bought a pre-owned watch, is going to go out there and going to run their watches through that system. Oh, yeah. Because, absolutely. because why not? Conceptually, conceptually Especially because upset. it's free. Don't forget, it's a free product. Yeah, no, that it, it sounds like a, a great product and something much needed in the market. And I just, I never heard that actual, you know, how it helps consumers or how it will be beneficial for consumers if they happen to lose a watch and be able to track it down. That's what I was just asking. If they happen to lose a watch and somebody registers that watch, the minute that they register it, that stays, right? And the minute you see that watch registered on there, you can then reach out and say, hey, because look, if I'm a dealer and I'm a reputable dealer and I run a watch through the database and all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, this thing came up flagged. There's a, there's a police report from, I don't know, Brooklyn, New York. What am I doing? What's my first reaction is to say, and I physically have the watch. Now I'm saying, I'm going back to whoever and say, hey, this thing has been stolen, right? right. And here's the police report. Here, This is who this watch belongs to. And it potentially, I'm now contacting the person it belonged to. Now, if that person has already claimed it on insurance and got his insurance paid, then I'm contacting the insurance company, Right. Because any any dealer out there that comes across a stolen watch, which he sees come up stolen, their first reaction should be, okay, I would like to get it back to its rightful owner. Right. You know, like people people will hold, uh, you know, oftentimes you send a watch to a company and the company just keeps it. <coughs> didn't, right. uh, didn't Anthony try to keep keep a watch that somebody... <laughs> that was, I don't know what the fuck that was all about. <laughs> that was really and, cool. and by the way, that watch... I guarantee you it wasn't correct because that's now is there's a, there's a, there's been a big scam going on where people will take and make these bezels that are just literally one to one. No, Roland like, said it was apparently original. Uh, apparently it was original, but I still like 
for example, because because then when it turned out that the watch was original, after that I said even if it's a million percent original, I still don't want to watch take that watch because it's tainted. Because no, you don't want that. Everybody is going to be yeah. second guessing whether that watch was real right. or not. Everybody's an expert all of a sudden. Listen, so this is there's just an easy way to go about this. If you're not sure, just don't fucking touch it. See, the only expert is our in-house Zenith expert, REG. He's the only expert. I like this one here. Why not create a watch fact <laughs> available for both dealers and customers? Well, well I think that's, that's what this, that's what what this, this thing is, is right? going to be. Yeah. It's yeah, going to be a watch fax. Yeah, yep. That's literally what this is. It's like a Carfax, but for watches. Yeah. It's literally what it's, it's literally its design, and it's literally what it's I designed to I think when Paul do. explains it, it gets complicated. Yeah, uh, that's why like... I was asking the questions wrong, because right. I don't think no one's really explained the service and how it helps, actually. Well, we're, we we're to, waiting. We need to hear I'll it tell in you where it It's supposed to be, we're finishing up some code. Uh, my team actually revamped the interface, the front end, because it looked a little, I don't know. It wasn't. It didn't look good enough, but you know we have inside graphic designers and web designers. Yeah. So, so you're working on the UI. Yeah. So the UI was like not great. Where we did the UI ourselves. Right now they're finishing up some backend coding once it's all done. Because remember, the, all this stuff lives on a blockchain. It's, it's so the technology is a bit cumbersome to implement and so on and so forth. And the next step is actually for Paul uh, to fly out to. Uh, my place and for us to sit down and do a an intro video together uh also vadim from arisa aficionado is going to be involved because he's involved in a project as well and the guys from happy jewelers right so oh, from the dealer side it's us uh it's vadim from arisa aficionado as alongside with the guys from happy jewelers i don't remember their names because i'm terrible with names Daniel. But, Daniel. yes so once we do that, we're all, we're all going to convene in one place and do an intro video. After that, I'm going to do a series of videos that's going to show the how-to, how it works. Uh, and then after that, I am going to update my website with a badge that the watch has been Digital Vault certified, which will allow the user then to click and actually see that, A, this watch has been ran through these databases and it comes up clean, quote-unquote. And I think it's going to take a whopping three months for everybody that's anybody online selling watches to run through the same process. And the dealers, every gray market dealer is going to rush to get their watches checked because yeah. this has never existed. Up until now, the way we check our watches is it, we have somebody that can call and run it through the company because 99 out of 100 times if a watch is declared stolen, it, it's reported to the company. And that's the one way to do it. But the only other way is to, again, to have recourse. We're never shy to say, oh, I am sorry that your watch ended up being stolen. Here's your money back. I'll get back to the bottom of the problem. Does it happen often? No, but it happens. We, we spoke about this early on with, with when Paul initially talked about it. Um, again, I think some people have seen that Paul has, has said that he would talk to me about it. He hasn't, so I still have no inside information. And whether he chooses to or not is, is obviously Paul. JJ, I is. promise you, you will be the first live. We'll go on to talk about it. Sweet. You have, yeah, what, is it, what is it? You'll have, you have exclusive rights to go live about this product. <laughs> Somebody clip that. <laughs> but the, the, one of the things that we found early on, is like, you know, Richmond has their service and stuff, is that if you go read, it's like impossible to get them to bloody talk to you. Like they're really very consumer oriented and they're very, very difficult to deal with. And for my own law enforcement, uh, experience going to the different actual parent companies to get the information is beyond non-trivial. That's like the problem is that by Richmond doing their own thing, then Swatch Group may follow suit, or or watches of Switzerland may do it, or Rolex may do it. It's it's so it's very segmented. What this yeah, product is meant to do fragmented. is not to be segmented. It's it's meant to be because look, how do you prove? Cause anybody can go out there and prove and say, hey, that was my watch and it was stolen. The only way you're really proving anything to me is to show me original ownership and the police report, right? Yep. Because if you go to create a police report, and Ali, correct me if I'm wrong, you can't just walk in and say, hey, my watch was stolen. Well, show me that you had this watch. Give me an invoice. Show me where you bought it. Because well, you okay. have to provide so technically, it. you can create the report without providing any information, which, by the way, somebody we spoke about earlier did things like that, right? But to actually then use the report for the sake of things like Chubb and underwriters insurance, you have to have that history. So there is a whole boutique industry of fraudsters that help 
legitimize police reports specifically to smaller police departments because smaller police departments don't have necessarily sophistication right. to follow up on these things. But yeah, you're right in general. But I do want to clarify that because something that Stefano alleged to have done in getting certain people involved is reproducing a paper trail that didn't really exist. Well, that's right. that's when he provided me with like some cocky media letter from some attorney that's working on this case. I looked up this attorney in somewhere in New Jersey, and I'm like, no, something. This is why I said something doesn't smell good here. But you're right. If you no insurance company is gonna take a claim, if you know you have to basically submit a urine sample to to the insurance company to to create a claim. You know what I mean? And you have to have the stuff previously insured. To have it previously insured, you have to have the stuff appraised. You have to submit that appraisal. You have to have serial numbers. Just, you know, because look, I my personal stuff, like my wife's watches, they're all insured. There's an appraisal for every watch. There's a serial number behind every watch, right? I have an original invoice, you know, that, so all those things. It's, it's, it, listen, if you want to fraud somebody and create insurance fraud or whatever fraud, if there's a will, there's a way, I know. But, you know, for the most part, no one system is going to be a million percent proof, right? As long as you yeah. can get it to that 99% range, then you're good. Because the overall good, you know, plus minus a couple of points of whatever being wrong, the overall good is, is it's it's a good, it's going to be a good product, you know? And when I was approached about it, I got really, really excited about it. it because it's, it's, it's just going to be a help to dealers and consumers alike. Boost consumer confidence for one and allow people to go in and, you know, actually help those that got their watches stolen from them. So we got a super chat from Real World Curly, $5 super chat. He says, Roman, what's your thoughts on Oshin and thoughts on him being an upstart watch reseller? We love seeing Marco get his balls busted on LB videos. Thanks. I have never done business with Oshin. Uh, the only run-in I had with him is what he's done in the watch space on YouTube, which I'm not very, very fond of. Uh, mm -hmm. And c certain instigations, certain things that he's done, certain things that he said uh, that were, I was not very, very fond of. If yeah. somebody came to me today and said, hey, would you do business with Ocean? I would say no. Well, and I'll leave it no, we got, Wait, hold on, Marco. We got, a, we got, a, I'm sorry, we got a clip. We got a clip. Um, also attached with this from our friend oh, Real World Curly, who is the clip master. So I want to give him credit where credit is due. Fuck you, Curly. Um, this is a uh, Oshin. Uh, looks like he's had a few. I don't know. Um, talking no. about Nico. Allegedly. Yeah, I'm going off to Belfast. I'm going to find Nico Leonard, take him by the throat and strangle him to death, whispering fucking fairy tales in his ear. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I have no. Yeah, I, I'm still shocked how this guy is still on YouTube. But I think that the reason he's on YouTube is because he's smart about using other YouTube channels as proxies to yep. spew his fucking bullshit. But yeah. uh, if if anybody were to call me and say, hey, do you think I should send Ocean X amount of money? Uh, my answer would be no. Remember we met him the first time at the London Watch Show? That's where I met you the first That's time. That's where I met you, yeah. Yeah, he was so different. So different. I don't know what happened. Uh, alcohol, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. And we have bubble. And he's gonna have a he's gonna have a hell of a time. He's gonna he's gonna try to go to Belfast and strangle Nico. Have you guys seen uh, Nico's COO? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking, Steve, Steve, Steve is is like Steve. six five to yeah. two fifty. Yeah. Like right. he'll like <laughs> fucking step on him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You know, that's what happens. People sit around and have a few and, uh, you know. They Guys, tell, I got to be up at about five something. hours. I will tell you one more insurance story if you want to hear it, a personal one, since we're on the topic of insurance, and then I'm going to jump off. And so, uh, thank you for the kind this, words, Baba. Let me just read this chat to you before you uh, tell Baba the story. Baba Hotep. Yes, Baba Hotep, $5. He says, the level of information being dropped tonight is off the scale. Roman, thanks for sharing your knowledge, wisdom, and experience with us. So, I don't I don't go in many lives at all i always want to hang out with jj because this channel is just about that it's just about <laughs> watch talk it's about r real things not about any drama it's like you know we just 
have a chat and topics tend to get carried one direction or another. But I do agree that myself included, I get useful information out of this because when you get a bunch of people in the room that have the same passions, you tend to good stuff comes up. I'll give you one more insurance story. Ready? So I've never, ever, believe it or not, had an insurance claim in my lifetime. Never had any. Uh, I'm talking about on a personal level. Never had anything stolen. Never, nothing ever came up missing except one day. Uh, my wife comes up to me. She's like, "Listen, I." She has a set of diamond bangles. Uh, they're about twenty thousand dollars, right? It's three bangles with diamonds around them. She's like, "I haven't seen my set of bangles that you gave me." I said, "Well, they got to be somewhere in the house." And, you know, it's like you know, your jewelry box has all the jewelry. All of a sudden, the one set of bangles is missing. Like you must have misplaced it. She's like, "Yeah, you're probably right." couple of weeks go by. She's like, listen, I flipped the house upside down. I cannot find those bangles. I must have either lost them somewhere or replaced them, misplaced them. I cannot find them. What do we do? I said, listen, well, we do pay a significant amount to Chubb to, for insurance. I said, let's create a claim if you're 100% sure that you lost them. She's like, I am. I looked everywhere. You know, everybody, just they're not here. Okay. We submit a claim. That's a bit of a process. I sent him the appraisal, the invoice, the whole to-do, which is kind of weird because the invoice comes from my own company, right? Because I bought those bangles somewhere and then, you know, took them. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it was a process that took about a month. So finally, back and forth, a bunch of emails, this, that, and the other. And Chubb is really good, actually. Chubb is, I highly, for personal insurance, I highly recommend Chubb. You know, you will get paid, Right. So a month Even later, for the regular watch collector who doesn't yes, have for the regular watch collector, when people ask me, I always recommend Chubb. That's what I how, use. How do you my feel own. about Jewelers Mutual too? I know that's one. Jewelers Mutual is watches. good. It's better. It's better on a business end of things, like Jewelers Block or Jewelers Mutual, which is a subsidiary of Lawyers of London, I believe. But for personal, I personally like my wife's stuff and whatever I have personal is insured by Chubb. Like I don't even use Jewelers Block for that. I use Chubb. So. And for my house insurance, they're just they're expensive, but they're the best. I've had losses inside the house where like I had a leak and my whole basement was flooded or a pipe burst. These guys came out, they paid everything to the penny and they were quick about it because a month is quick in insurance terms. Yeah. So anyway, I get a phone call from Chubb and it's like the final phone call where they're about to write you a check. And I'm talking to the lady like she's asking me bunch of final questions to the tune of where to send the check to and so hold to do and they're about to cut me a check for twenty thousand dollars as i'm on a phone with this insurance lady i get a phone call from my wife i said would you mind holding for a second it's my wife on the other line uh because she called she called me once i said i'll call her back she called me again i'm like must be something important i'm thinking something about the kids whatever my wife calls me the lady's on the other line she goes you're not going to believe this she's like what i found the bangles I was literally 60 seconds away from this lady mailing me a check for 20 grand. And I'm like, what do you mean? Turns out whenever we go to a party somewhere and it's it's where I'm wearing a suit, my dress shoes upstairs in my closet. You guys seen the way I dress? You don't often see me in a suit or dress shoes, right? I wear sneakers. So my wife keeps my shoes inside our upstairs closet. We came home one night, obviously a bit, a bit uh, uh, I don't know. Under not I wanna call it under the weather, we were fucking drunk, right? And <laughs> I take my shoes off downstairs and uh I took my uh, tuxedo jacket off, the whole to do, went upstairs, whatever. And what my wife does, uh the next day she'll take those shoes from downstairs and bring them upstairs. Well, apparently the night prior, she took her bangles off, and knowing that the shoes are gonna go upstairs, which is also where her jewelry box is, she put the bangles inside my shoes. Oh. <laughs> takes the shoes upstairs, puts them up on a shelf, and they sit there for, I don't know, I have like three or four pair of dress shoes that, you know, and I haven't worn them in months. Those those bangles sat in those shoes for like three, four months, and she couldn't find them for obvious reasons. I click over, and I'm in my mind, I'm like, well, shit, I can get a check for 20 grand right about now, right? And I'm like, no way, that's bad fucking karma. I click over, and I go to the lady. I'm like, I'm really, really sorry, but you're going to have to close the claim. She's like, what do you mean? She's like, I know it's hard to believe, but my wife literally just called me on the line and said that the bangles were found. She's like, well, we're literally about to issue you a check. Like, I was about to click a button. The check was going to get mailed. I'm like, well, guess what? I just saved you $20,000. That was my one claim insurance story where the bangles were found the mid as I was on the phone with the insurance company. What if what if you missed, right? And, like, what if, uh, like, would you be able to give them the money back? Or how would I, I that would, work? That's what, that's what I would do. 
Yeah. Because I believe in karma and I believe in God and I think he watches everything anyway. So oh, yeah. I would just give the money back if we found the Bengals. That's great. Oops. We have we have a five dollar super chat. He says, Thank you. This is from Clear Choice Public Adjuster. The Clear Choice Public Adjusters. Thank you very much. By the way, and... public adjusters are the shit. When you get a flood in your house, don't try to call the insurance company yourself. Call a public adjuster. <laughs> they also Those guys are good. They will get they, you all the money. They, they take a chunk, before, but they will get you all the money. Thank you for uh, getting them a watch. Uh, G-Shock. Undefeated G-Shock. You got them? Boys, I think this is the longest live you've had, JJ. Three yeah, and a half hours. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap soon. I know you got to go. So I'm going right, to go. I'm going to sleep. I got to be up at six in the morning to go to a trade show. We're going to give Mark. you a grand finale. Here's Marco, $100 Canadian, says, please be sure to like and subscribe to the best live stream for Watch Talk on the tubes. Thank you, Marco. Marco, you still man. you still doing this in Canadian dollars? <laughs> I have my billion. So I, get American, the, I get to save on the conversion. That's, that's, like, that's like what? What's that U.S.? Like $22? Come oh, on now. <laughs> So bad, right? <laughs> uh, all right, look, we're gonna keep Roman here all night, so we're gonna let you go, Roman, because I know you'll stay. Guys, in hey, JJ, us, thanks so. for having me, guys. Pleasure talking Anytime, to you all, man. See you I'll later. See you on, I'll see you on the next one. Thank Bye. you, Roman. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Roman Sharp in the house. AKA Marco, you tell him you're just trying to to uh, cater to your Canadian uh, audience, <laughs> sir. Look, no, we appreciate all gonna, the dollars, all the different types of dollars. That one be expensed by LB. What do you guys think? Sounds good. Sounds good. Did you? I, I was that? actually gonna bring that up, but then he was leaving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep laughing. It's on the LB, LB's corporate account. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, guys, we're gonna wrap up in a few. So if you do want to get in on the super chat contest get in there now we're gonna do a final uh a final call we'll do one minute one minute warning uh get them in now if you want to be part of the race for tonight and that's that i hope you guys are enjoying the show by the way because we're about to wrap up soon i think we lost jeremy still awake or did we lose him there we go yeah he's there <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> a lot of if this was your first intro to roman you just found out his resting heart rate is 10 10 beats per minute because you can stop and talk nonstop without talking. <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy. It's funny. Hey, we heard some great stories tonight at the beginning. Yeah. 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 LB, yeah. How Gary came about. How yeah, Adrian yeah, yeah. Came about. I always wondered, though, so it was nice to be able to, like, he's only usually on when a controversy is happening to have a kind of open forum. That was really cool of him jumping on. Yeah. I oh, agree. here we go. We have Patrick in the house. Our friend AD oh, never called him. Wow. In the chat. He says, holy crap, I tuned in and realized I missed it all. It's well oh, worth the uh, rewinding, Patrick. Yeah, you got three and a half hours to uh, of uh, catching up to do. And we got a $5 super chat from our man, the Z-Man. He says, I'm in. Cool, cool. Uh, Clear Choice says, love the show. Um, thank, thank you for uh, joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, love having some new people in the chat. Always fun. Always fun indeed. Yes, All right, so what do you say? Shout to Z-Man. We call the contest. Uh, call, here. call. No more. Okay. No more. Z Man, you are the last, uh, which is uh, suiting. Uh, not suiting. Yes. That's the word I'm looking for. Alphabetical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, whatever Just it is. Get You're announcing, Z I'm Z tired. <laughs> I'm starting to, like, starting to fall asleep, so I'm forgetting yeah, the word I want. But... You're starting to look like the Giants. You, you know what's funny? <laughs> I, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do a whole two hours tonight. You know, we did. <laughs> Three hours and 32 minutes. 30 but. minutes yeah. I took yeah. melatonin before coming on. I was like, oh, he never runs long. This is the perfect yeah. one to go to ease into him, and then I'll just crash right afterwards. Yeah, after I feel my second four. wind. <laughs> All right, so let's get this race going, and then we'll, we'll do our wrap. Uh... All right, so we had 25 entries. Let's give it a shuffle. And... We're off. And they're off. Here comes Ali Reza down at the bottom of the screen, but his horse is quite slow. Here we go, public adjusters and boxing, <laughs> boxing Malaka. Boxing Malaka seems to have a strong <laughs> lead. His flat nose must be sucking up a lot of oxygen. Kent is making a run. Kent is making a push, but here comes Frank Philpot. He's a real big fan of Luxury Bazaar. But speaking of big fans, we got Billy Piccolo coming out of the backfield. Billy's been around since day one, and he's ready to win his race. But Kent is not making it easy for him. They are neck and neck. Here they come. Oh, uh, Brian, 10,000 sub Here dragon. Comes Brian with the 10,000 sub dragon out of the backfield. Can he make oh, it? No, oh. he cannot. Kent oh, Kent. 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 Oh, K
You know, Brian won way too many. I, th- I was like, if his ho- if his camel wins, there's something wrong here. He wins too many. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's I had a. Uh, it, 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 Marco's camel didn't do well, but I named Marco's camel oh, Gary Strodal Marco. Dead <laughs> <man. Jesus. laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Kent. You made it. I got it, Ali. Thank you very much. And Bubba says, Malaka ran out of steam. Yes. <laughs> uh, camel was never steam, winning. Something was steaming anyway. Uh, very good. Very good. Oops. Camel oh. never winning. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff, yep. guys. Oh, By the man. way, oh. you should get Poway on to do one of. The, I think he'd be a great announcer for one of those races. Oh, God. oh if no. Poway oh, would commit God. to being the announcer, that would be excellent. Yeah. I would. I would love to have Poway announce. That would well, be my big favorite. casting suggestions for you. Yeah, but well, she'll come on and complain. The show, you only want me to announce. You don't want me on the show. You'd be very upset. But uh, I think he'll be happy for a platform. It's been a hell of a show, man. Hell of a show. I just want to take a second to remember that it is now nine eleven. So. Uh, just want to put it out there, too. Thank you, JJ. A little somber note. We'll leave on a somber note, but it's been a great show. I'd like to thank everyone for joining. Of course, Ali, REG, Half on Smash, Robert Wood, The Butcher, Jeremy, congratulations on your new piece. Thank you for Appreciate joining us. Popping your cherry up? here with us. There it is. Our man, Marco. Of course, Roman and everyone else who joined us. Everybody in the chat. We do appreciate your time, and if you did enjoy today's show and you happen to not upvote at this point, um, maybe now's a good time. Also, if you could leave a comment at the end of the show, it really does help push us out to the algorithm. 143 likes right now. Let's break that 150, guys. Yeah, 150 would be great. And guys, if you're watching the replay, don't be shy. You could still leave a comment down below. Let us know what you want to see in upcoming episodes. We do appreciate it. <sighs> On that note, guys, we're about to wrap it up. We're just going to do something plain. Uh, okay. I'm going to do a little plain something tonight. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. We'll go out in classic style, man. Have a good night, guys. We'll catch you on Wednesday. <laughs>